If I was arguing with Sargon and Sargon was gonna make the statement that like, oh, well, all women are a certain thing, I'm gonna appeal more to like, well, hold on, like societally speaking, like gender identity is very much tied to like cultural norms. So for instance, at one point in time, having long hair meant you were a woman, right? This has changed a lot recently and it was different in the past. Or like wearing jewelry used to mean you were female, but now that's different, right? These are social things. It's not biological to have long hair or smooth legs or biological to have whatever. But then when you come over to this side, these people have taken that argument on like, steroids and they're like true there's no difference between men and women it's like oh cool i guess we don't have to talk about like a woman's fear of getting raped on a date then because women and men should be about the same i guess if that's literally what you're saying right but this isn't true I, I, okay i don't want to get baited into this shit, okay wait here i just have a, i just have a, such a quick i'm so curious about this topic yeah go okay okay so yeah to, well, uh, just to hammer it in because it keeps coming up again <laughs> demon mama just bullied someone off a of prime case have exposure to testosterone. They're still female. They got ovaries. They have gametes, right? They 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 uh, uh they got a clitoris, right? They got a pussy, right? Everything, right? Like, uh, but they have low resonance voice. This is like a ridiculous claim. That is like, why would you ever so, defend something? So like let's this? go to uh, Joe then Jack. Yeah, Rachel, I think that's really interesting because I think part of the issue here is that even having that discussion, uh, like I, you know, I, I see in the chat CG four it sort of legitimizes this scientific base of sex, right? And I- Uh-oh. Here's the clip of her leaving. Everyone's time. Um, yeah, and... I agree. I have no interest being here, Prime, with this person, so I'm gonna drop. Thank you for letting me Bye. have space a little bit, but I have no interest in talking to this group. So other than actually, uh, everyone except for Demon Mama is fine. Cool. So have a good night. Bye. Um, no, but I don't, I don't know, like- I... What happened? Person who left literally studies voices you for a living. Know. Well, wait, now I want to hear the context. And guess what? People will do the same exact thing that I just talked about, meaning that your point was completely a waste of everyone's time. But all females until develop next year the exact when I same go, way. Until next year when I go get my screen printed uh, new throat that I have surgically implanted and I have a literally grown from a vat, uh, quote unquote, uh, essentially female neck that has essentially female resonance and tone. Yes, you are correct. Uh, until then, there will probably be some distinguishable difference. But guess what? The moment that that there isn't a limitation on that, there will be a. I will suddenly have implanted a brand new neck that gives me a voice that's just oh, it's perfectly untouched by by uh, by testosterone. And guess what? People will do the same exact thing that I just talked about, meaning that your point was completely a waste of everyone's time. And actually, um, yeah, and I agree. I have no interest being here. But okay. fuck, I'm so yes. Nervous, no. Demon Mama just called out a voice as being deeper. Pitch. Resonance as well. okay. My pitch low and I sound kind of weird now. Now I've just dropped my pitch and my resonance is very, very high, very bright. I sound weird. And then I'm going to drop my resonance as well. And then I start sounding like this. And then I'm going to bring my resonance back up and I'm going to leave my pitch the same. We, we know the difference between resonance and pitch. No, yeah, you don't. Like, because no we're all here, trans. No we one, know the difference because, between resonance because and no, pitch. Because no, you don't. Because Demon Mama we, just we, Demon we, Mama we, just called Demon Mama just called out a voice as being deeper. Um, talking about pitch, but I'm talking about resonance. My voice is it's the a same voice. It's colloquial. Oh boy, pedantry it's, it's from not, the Calliope club. It needs club. to be. Here we go. Yes, it needs to be. Pe it ne I need pedantry because you're 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 making a claim but about it's been voices. Clarified. You're making a claim Clarif about voice pitch being related, and I'm making a claim about voice resonance being related. Resonance okay, is so the link, not I get pitch. both of them fixed. It doesn't there change the argument. You're literally female, just like, arguing about a meaningless detail. There are because resonance, resonance and pitch is significantly different. Um, so pitch is like the actual, um, and resonance has to do with like the, um, there's a really fancy word for it. It might be syncopathic or something, but the the other types of vibrations that exist in a room is like the like the resonance. There's a, probably a better engineering definition of this. It's like the vibration of an object um, when it's exposed to a certain pitch, like the resonance or whatever of something. Um, let's look up the exact definition of this. Oh, okay, physics. The reinforcement or prolongation of a sound by reflection from a surface or by the synchronous vibration of a neighboring object. That's the word we're looking for. Um, if you ever stand in your, um, if you ever stand in your bathroom um, and you go like, if you like, if you go like from, if you go from one octave to the next, there's a really bad example, I second thing. But if you go from like one octave to the next, what'll happen is, is as you grow, as you go up in pitch, or if you're just singing a song, every now and then you might hit a note. And for some reason, that note sounds way, way, way louder in your bathroom. 
and you don't know why, the reason is because you're hitting the resonant frequency or the resonant pitch of the bathroom. It's because that's the pitch that's vibrating the most like with the with the other, it could be with the size of the thing, with the combination of the construction materials or whatever. Um, but yeah, resonance and pitch are two very, very, very different things. Uh, like totally different things. Or, well, they're very different things. But there are females who are born with voices of lower no, resonance. No, there's not. What do we know? So, what do we oh, know? Wait, what do you say no? Let me answer. 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 I don't know as much about vo vo like. So my understanding is that men have, um, it's in the larynx. It's your vocal folds. Um, there's very, very, very little overlap, I think, between male like larynx fold sizes and female larynx fold sizes. Even if a male has a higher pitch or a lower pitch, I think that those folds tend to be larger almost always than women folds, um, almost always. Um, I don't remember this exactly, but I think it's because when your throat is exposed to testosterone, something happens here. It's what causes your Adam's apple to appear and it's pushed out, but it's incredibly rare. That's why like, that's why a woman and a man talking at the same pitch. So like, uh, I could talk here and then a woman could talk. Uh, no, I was just switching my falsetto, but that, would, that wouldn't even get it. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can actually change. Well, I guess she was changing the resin. I don't know how you would do that. But like even at two, two people talking in the same pitch are still gonna have a different timbre. So a different quality of like their sound. And I think that's because of that vocal fold difference. Let me answer why. Let, let, let me let, answer why. Please. Well, let her answer. Let me answer why. Sure. The male vo vocal tracts are affected by testosterone. That can cause a 20% increase in volume, um, and it causes a thickening of vocal folds. That is what testosterone does. If you are affected by testosterone... Is it possible to train your natural voice to be higher or lower? You can train your voice higher or lower to the pitch, but I don't know how much you can do with the resonancy. I don't think you can do that. You might be able to go from bottom to top, but I don't think you can go from top to bottom. There are weird things that you can do. So in instruments, this is called a harmonic. Um, in physics, or I guess in music theory, this would be called like an overtone series. Um, for a brass player, these would be called partials. Uh, but like, if you, if you start on a fundamental pitch, bam, within this pitch, you have, you have other notes that are contained. And if you like hit the string a little bit and you, and you disrupt the fundamental pitch, what you can do is you can hit higher things called part of the overtone series. So I think from low to high, you might be able to do tricks to make it sound like a certain thing. Like a man might be able to convincingly sound like a woman, but it's very, very hard for a woman to sound like a man, I think. Um, so like for instance, on a tuba, you can play really, really, really high notes on a tuba. If you really tighten your embouchure and you really hit those high partials, you can play high notes on a tuba. But on a trumpet, you're never gonna play a note that a tuba can play. It's just, you just don't have the, the re you don't have the resonating body for it on a trumpet, you just can't do it. Um. Then you will have a voice that has the properties of a vocal track that is 20% more volume and thicker, 20% thicker. When she says, vo I wonder if they know this, when she says volume, she's actually talking about space is what she's talking about. Her vocal folds, that is what happens to testosterone affected voices. Not that all females, is the, until, until not, all females nope. not all females until develop the exact same go, way. Until next year when I go get my screen printed uh, new throat that I have surgically implanted. About so this, and I'm being descriptive about it. Language. They, don't know, they don't know what it is. They can't even hey, acknowledge hey, it. Hey, hey, ants can vomit hey. chemicals into each other's mouths. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So but I'm just saying that, like, I think it's very silly to tie um, to, like, just let me You're gonna be okay to over there? You're gonna be just okay? Let me no, I'm gonna drop from this panel because I really don't want to play this game of one. Okay, you, know, you, you one should drop from this panel because it seems like if Whoa. you can't handle like the conversation, then you should. Okay, so let's... let me let me let me respond to you at least. So you're being you're being prescriptive about so this, and I'm being descriptive about it. You're saying what should be, I'm saying what is now. First off, the second thing is you're not listening to me when I'm talking about voice. So um, this is something that I have a lot of experience in, and I'm one of maybe ten or fifteen people that have my level of experience. So. I'm gonna show you something, ready? Um, we're gonna play the game of voice and what their differences in voice are. So first we're gonna drop my pitch. So I'm gonna just drop my pitch and I'm gonna keep my pitch low and I sound kind of weird now. Now I've just dropped my pitch and my resonance is very, very high, very bright. I sound weird. And then I'm gonna drop my resonance as well. I, this person has to have some kind of music training to be using words like bright or whatever. I would trust almost anything she says just because it sounds like she has the vocabulary for it. And then I start sounding like this. And then I'm going to bring my resonance back up and I'm gonna leave my pitch 
the same. We, we know the difference between resonance and pitch. No, yeah, you don't. Because no we're all here, trans. No we one, know the difference between resonance because, and no, pitch. Because no, you don't. Because Demon Mama we, just we, Demon we, Mama we, just no. called Demon Mama just called out a voice as being deeper. Um, talking about pitch, but I'm talking about resonance. My voice is it's the a same. Voice. It's colloquial. Oh boy, it, it, you can't. So this. I'm sorry, dude, but I have seen so many stupid trans people on, on panels when they talk about stuff like this, and it absolutely triggers the fuck out of me. Because, like, I don't know if it's transphobic if you assume this, but I, would, you should, I imagine you should know this. You can't just say it's colloquial or, like, oh, well, it's just, like, everybody knows what deeper means. Deep, like, th these things mean very, very, very different things. And it bothers me because a trans person that's trying to transition or that's trying to have a gender expression that is going to more closely match their identity, like, should know what it means for something to be deeper or higher or brighter, like these things all mean different things. A deeper pitch. So the way, so when she, when um, when Alice here is talking about like resonancy to describe what I imagine is similar to like volume or resonance. So volume is in like the space in the in the larynx of the throat or or the um, like the 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 volume or the resonancy. She's using the word brighter or darker. Um, so musically, when we say something is bright. We're imagining something that is bright. It kind of has like a maybe a shrill. Shrill is a really bad way to say, but like brighter, like I don't know, brighter, shriller are kind of the words we use. Um, and then you also have something that can have a different type of sound that has a darker sound, a darker or warmer sound. Now you can be very high pitched, but still have a very dark and warm sound. You can be very low pitched and still have like a pretty bright sound, right? Um, but there's a huge difference between measuring the darkness to the brightness of a sound versus the low pitch to the high pitch of a sound. And if you ever just use like deeper to just say like, oh, it's deeper. Well, what exactly do you mean? Because it's actually really important, the difference here. And this is one of the problems that a lot of um, trans women will have in transitioning is they'll find that just changing the pitch alone of their voice still leaves you with distinctly a trans voice. Like people can hear it. And every trans woman or a lot of trans women have this experience. So it's weird to pretend that like they, they wouldn't or that like, it's not, I, I'm not gonna say necessarily she's pretending that they wouldn't, but like, Yo, I don't like it when some, it really, really, really bothers me. My number one fucking trigger is it really fucking bothers me when people are being very descriptively accurate and true and some fucking moron comes in out of left field and is like, you're just playing semantics. People do this shit to me all the time. I'm not just playing semantics. I'm being very particular with the words that I'm choosing. I'm not just throwing a bunch of random shit to the wall. I really wish when people would say that to me, they would stop. Because when, when I have a debate with somebody, notice how I did this yesterday several times. If I don't, if I feel like I'm not understanding something, I'll usually be like, okay, wait, hold on. What do you mean by infinity value? Or what do you mean by worth? Or what do you mean by morals? Or what do you mean by this, right? I'll try to ask to figure it out. Instead of just being like, well, that's just a semantic disagreement. No, don't say that. It doesn't sound like there's a semantic disagreement. Here. It sounds like there's a fundamental disagreement. It sounds like there's a semant, uh, oh, I almost said semantic, like semantic is syntax, um, or syntactical. There, there, there's like a, there is a disagreement on the material. Like there's actually a, a material meaningful disagreement here. It's not just semantic. Don't just hand wave it and say it's just semantics. Fuck, it really, really, really triggers the fuck out of me when people do shit like this. Bradley. Four dollars and ninety-nine cents. You really need to play examples for this, but this is a great topic to hammer demon mama on. Um, what? Like, it's so hard to play. So, like, if I were to say, like, um, bass notes, grand piano. Um, these are all going to be shitty recordings. But like, if I were to play something like this versus like, um, like a like bass notes and like a stand-up piano. Um, like, I think in general, That's the short I think people would say that like, um, ugh, fuck, I'm not gonna be able to find, I can't, I'm not, because the audio recording and everything's gonna be off, right? Grand pianos, I think, tend to have, will tend to have like deeper, warmer sounds than like a stand-up piano that'll be very bright. Or if you've ever heard the difference, um, like, if you listen to like a person playing the trumpet, you can usually instantly sound, if you've heard the instruments, you can hear the difference between a trumpet and a cornet very quickly, or like a flugelhorn, because like a flugelhorn generally will have a way warmer sound than a trumpet, where the trumpet will sound a bit brighter, a bit more yellow, or a bit more shrill. Um, I hate the word shrill because it has such a negative connotation to like a lay person. But like, um, yeah, like you, you'll, you'll hear, or like a viola versus a violin, right? Like a, um, a viola will tend to have like a warmer sound than a violin, even if they play the exact same note. Like a viola will have like a, a somewhat of a warmer sound. Um, <clears throat> Okay, sorry. All right. Um, fuck. That j it just triggers the fuck out of me when people do that. Is this a walk-on panel right now? Very bright. I wonder what the full context of this was. Uh, gametes, right? The binary is shattered. There is no longer a binary. A binary isn't 
one two one two one two one two one two one two three one two one two one two one two. Is this related to all the bass and treble sound signatures when you're shopping for headphones? How some sound warmer or colder? Yeah, sure. Somebody might say that like so for the HD 598s for Sennheiser, the mids in those. The mids were like pretty heavy, um, maybe a little bit overpowering. People would describe those headphones as being like having a warmer sound or a darker sound. Or the negative term, if it's too warm or too dark, somebody might say a little bit of a muddy sound because you don't have as much clarity in the highs. Something that lacks a lot of like mid punch in that mid frequency range and really hits those highs, you might say that this has like a very bright sound. Maybe if it's too much, maybe a tinny sound or maybe a shrilly sound, right? No, binary is one, two to infinity. So long as there is one difference, one person who is not in that, the binary doesn't exist. So let's That's go to it. Demon yeah. Mama, um, uh, Joe, um, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, it's called I all trans like everything, so it's probably only trans people, huh? What, Wait, no, what she's not a trans person. Describing is like well, I don't a, think she is. Fuck, I don't know if that's true or not. Whoops. A, it's sort of just like stating a phenomena that occurs, um, which is true. People do hear a deep voice and they assume this person is a male. Oh, I'm trans. I'm non-binary. That's right. Fuck, you're right. Shit, I forgot. Regardless of whether that's actually true. And in fact, um, this they might not even know that they're assuming that they're male. They just, they don't have any concept of sex or gender. And they go, that's the one I don't want to fuck. And, uh, or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, that's not how we're trying. You know, I mean, I would hope that our, our uh, general understanding of these things in the name of progress would move beyond something like that. The reality is that using the depth of your voice, like literally I could go tomorrow and take my money. Uh, no, no, I refuse to give you time. I'm addressing you after you're done talking. No, go for it. Why is Demon Mom such a fucking piece of shit? Like she raises her hand to talk. Um, Literally, I could go tomorrow and take my money. Uh, no. Oh wait, she's doing the timeout thing. Never mind. Okay, hold on. She's doing the timeout. A little bit more aggressive. A little bit more aggressive, to be no, fair. I refuse to give you time. I'm addressing you after you're done talking. Don't no, go for it. Um, the uh, the, if you go and take a if oh, I go tomorrow that's and I get you know, laser okay. uh, laser voice uh, shaving tracheal shave whatever I can't remember the name of the surgery. Uh, there I will have a throat that resembles and, re and creates the exact um pitch as anybody else. But that would not make people assuming that I'm like that I'm you know X X female. Correct. They would be wrong. They would be reading my gender expression and making wrong assumptions about biological sex. That doesn't matter. This is why this becomes incoherent. This is why I'm saying it's an incoherent structure. So we should we should divorce these concepts. Why would we continue using a, a flawed system like that? We don't need to have these. these things together if somebody you know the way that i look at it is genderism is a, is a very very complex incredibly messy historically varied uh, way of, of identifying ourselves to others so that people can identify a part of who we are sex is not that and really hasn't been unless you go back to like unless you go like all the way back to like when humans like just evolved and even then there's probably arguments against this we yeah we don't i mean i don't even know if animals really use sex they use like like weird uh signal well, they, 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 they know what it is they can't even acknowledge hey, it hey, it's it's like, vomit chemicals into each other's mouths yeah, yeah. Yeah, so i'm saying like i think it's very silly to tie um to like <laughs> Some people are okay over there. Okay. Some people, no, I'm gonna drop from this panel because I really don't want to play this game of. Okay, you, you should drop from this panel because it seems like if you can't handle like the conversation, then you should. Okay, so, so let me let me. Damn. And some of them they just fall into happening to light, and other things they don't. So we respond uh, quickly, Joe, and then we'll go to Alice, and then Greg, and then Jack. Because we're weirdly disagreeing and agreeing at the same time, right? Because I agree that sex means fucking nothing at all. Like it means nothing. It doesn't. It, do, it doesn't. Gender isn't based on sex in the way that sex is somehow determining what sort of gender will play out in the future. It has no causative effect on gender. It's not you're born a uh, female and then that has some causative effect on you being a woman. No, not at all. I'm saying. That oh man, I heart. Oh come on, that's this is too much. This is too much in the other direction. I think we can probably safely say that sex is causative to a large degree on gender. Not that it's always going to determine it, but like, it's not even that they're correlated. There is like a high degree of causality between like your exposure or your production of certain hormones and then your exposure and receptiveness to certain hormones into what becomes your gender. That's almost certainly true. It would be highly unlikely to imagine that these things weren't somewhat causally related, especially when people that try to transition are literally emulating those underlying biological processes, right? Sex is a uh, formative fiction created by science to make us believe that there is some distinction that is clear and concrete and factually based between men and women, and it is that a priori sort of building up of this idea of um, sex upon then which gender is justified. Because if there is a biologically justified difference between females and males, that automatically creates a culture that defines gender as women and men. So it's not that it has a causative effect, it's that it almost has a justificatory effect on the social um, in correlation with normative gender. So let's ask, let's ask a question real quick um, for, for Joe. Okay, okay, sure. Um, when, it, when it comes to like other societies that didn't necessarily subscribe to like the scientific method as like philosophy, what what do you like? What was your analysis of like other societies that have come to have more than two genders? You know, uh, we, we have examples of that all across the world, right? This is a huge point, right? This is where this sort of uh, this okay. This has happened, but I think it's incredibly rare. To be fair, um, uh, gender normalism sort of came to be, and they were like, well, hang on, maybe sex isn't as factual and objective and concrete as we think it is, given that this comes from Western science and it's not true of all science and all cultures, right? So like maybe this is not as concrete as as we think it is. So I would argue that. The fact that there's been a proliferation of Western ideas, of, I don't even like the term Western, you know, for this conversation, Western ideas of, of gender is to do with supremacy, globalization, colonization. So of course, our ideas about gender are everywhere now. And of course, there were other ideas about sex and gender in other cultures because science is culturally and socially constructed because it's discursive, it's based on language. Um, and so yeah, it, it, it's completely consistent. So I'm gonna go to Alice. Um, and Alice, uh, so Alice will go to you next. Alice, do me a favor, like, uh, we want me to like, uh, to know what you want to talk, like, please, like, palms out. Sometimes it looks like you're leaning on your head when you do this. So yeah, it's very helpful, but Alice. You got it. Um, yeah, all I wanted to say is like, uh, I guess the confusion for me is that claiming that there's not a basis on sex doesn't really explain why uh, when I um, 
when I talk like this, it's a little bit of a different gendering in some situations. Fuck. Then when I modify my voice to match better what uh, there is, uh, you know, physiologically different between uh, male and female voices. So, so I just, there's little things that we use, there are heuristics that we use to determine sex. Voice is one example of them. Uh, we're actually, uh, so what we're doing when we're listening to somebody's voice and we're gendering it as, as male or female or sexing it as male or female, what we're actually doing is we're listening and we're hearing components of voice that indicate the actual um, space that there is here, the uh, referential space, uh, the space here. We're actually, um, we're listening and we're hearing the difference in resonance in voice that makes up those spaces. And yes, actually, I know this uh, because this is one of the things that I studied. Um, so I, and I have studies on it if you want. Anyway, so just, uh, that's, that's what confuses me is that you're claiming that sex and gender don't have anything to do with each other, but there are things, heuristics that we use all the time that we use to determine what we think someone is. This person is a man or this person is a woman. And I agree, right? So, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I agree with you that we should stop this. This is bullshit. We should design these things. I agree. The problem is that what I see- Oh, and her problem. What an idiot. Oh my God, how stupid. This person thought that they could come onto this panel and make descriptive observations without trying to moralize every single fucking thing she's talking about. How how naive are you? Oh, our sweet summer child. Oh no, that's, I, I'm seeing where all the problems come in now because she even tried to caveat like, listen, this is how it is. I agree that it shouldn't be this way, but it's not enough anymore for people to make the prescription. It's not enough to just say like, well, this is how this works or this is what this is. If you even acknowledge that underlying reality, you're already a bigot. You've already fucked up. See happening instead, as I see people saying, "Well, you can be whatever you want," but it doesn't actually work in society because we use these heuristics. So I think we need to do something else. So what, what Joe is suggesting is make this sex, you know, um, you know, this this like difference in sexes does not as important. Make that not as important. Um, acknowledge that this is something that's constructed and break it down. Um, that's what I want to see happen, and I'm not seeing that happen. I'm just seeing us say everything is valid. You can do whatever you want. It's so sad that she got bullied from this panel when she was probably one of like the best trans representations on this panel too, from the sounds of it. Way better than Demon. I don't know about this person down here. I don't know about this person. Joe is pretty smart. I've interacted with her and seen her like in other discords. She seems like she's pretty smart. She's got the academic background for it. Although I don't agree with what she said for, and society is not adjusting that. So, so let's go to uh, uh, Red and then um, uh, Joe. You got uh, Demon. Go, go, demon. Go, go, red. Right, it's, it's, Sorry, I just want to clarify what I think might be a problem. Is I think that Demon Mama is talking about normative gender, and Alice is talking about evaluative gender in terms of like sex has something really to do with it, like if you change your voice and stuff. But in terms of like sex having any um, influence on gender as something normative, which we train people into behaving in gendered ways and performing in gendered ways. No, sex isn't a predetermining causative force, but why we make people perform gender. Oh, that's a much different claim. I would still fight on that one, but not as viciously. A lot of our gendered roles in society are probably in a more roundabout way attached to sex, but a lot of those are going to be socially trained. I, I, I would, I would pro, I'm pro, we're probably like, okay, so before I agreed with her 1%, now I would probably agree with her like 75%, 80%. We probably would agree on this. This video is a good example of the harmonic range and how you can use your throat to resonate higher pitches. However, sex may have an influence on how we evaluate someone's gender. Right. right so like the whole like um, the voice thing to like, oh, we use it as a way to signal our sex, right? So sure, in nature, this could be like, and we do this in Western society, right? In most societies today, because of just like history. But like to say that it's like there's like a causal relationship, right? That there's a like objective link between the two, that it signals like an objective fact, right? Is just not true. So long as it can't be universalized, it's not true. Like in, for example, from uh, certain tribes I've talked to about like the two-spirit stuff and like the history of gender in certain tribes, not all tribes are the same, obviously, they're all different, but in a lot of them, Gender wasn't like marked by your sex characteristics. It was marked by your role in the tribe. The thing you did determined your gender role, right? So like this is why like uh, their third, fourth gender roles were characterized as embodying the roles of like a bunch of different groups of people because they didn't say you're a man because you have a penis. They say you're a man because you hunt. You're a man because you you do certain things, right? All these like different social roles. Um, and like again, just because currently in society when you have a certain voice, people make assumptions about that voice. People make those assumptions because they're like socially informed. This is how they've been like the structure of society. You growing up, you associate these things together. But if hypothetically we had a different society where people didn't make those assumptions, then like the link would be completely broken. Like they wouldn't be objectively linked together. That's good. Right. Gender would not have no, no, no connection. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. We have a physiological link right now. Male so, voices have more resonance than female voices, or lower resonance than female voices. That's not even true. Can I read the resonance and female voices? Gender would not have no society where people didn't make those assumptions, then like the link would be completely broken. Like they wouldn't be objectively linked together. Sex and gender would not have no no connection. We have in that society. We have a physiological link right now. Male voices have more resonance than female voices, or lower resonance than female voices. That's not even true. That's true. That's true. Like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time. Like save for like any kind of. It sucks me. Oh God. If you were to go back and dig through videos, you could put together like so many things. Because I feel like when I have to argue with like extreme, extreme left people on this, I end up sounding like a conservative. But then when I argue with conservatives, because if I was arguing with Sargon and Sargon was going to make the statement that like, oh, well, all women are a certain thing, I'm going to appeal more to like, well, hold on, like societally speaking, like gender identity is very much tied to like cultural norms. So for instance, at one point in time, having long hair meant you were a woman, right? This has changed a lot recently and it was different in the past. Or like wearing jewelry used to mean you were female, but now that's different, right? These are social things. It's not biological to have long hair or smooth legs or biological to have whatever. But then when you come over to 
to this side, these people have taken that argument on like fucking steroids. And they're like, true, there's no difference between men and women. It's like, oh, cool. I guess we don't have to talk about like a woman's fear of getting raped on a date then because women and men should be about the same, I guess, if that's literally what you're saying, right? But this isn't true, right? We know this isn't true. Like there is a, there is a descriptive foundational fundamental difference between on the aggregate men and women. Like, and to pretend that it's all the same, like, fuck, it's, so st it's such a stupid argument. And everybody knows that it's not true. I don't know why we're pretending it is. On average, right? So you're talking about averages, right? No, th there are XY, XY, female, right? Uh, XY females, right? Who have deeper resonances, deeper voices. What do you mean? No, they literally no. exist. I've met them. Okay, okay. Like, if you wake up literally one person, one second, it's one. Oh, now she fucked up because she didn't do the sewer syndrome. Or she nodded through that. Now she's going to get crucified on that. No, no, yes, Which is true. There are XY females. It is, that is true. When we're talking about objective links between two things, so long as they, this is why gender is uh, a spectrum, because so long as there's one person on the planet who has ambiguous genitalia, ambiguous chromosomes, ambiguous like uh, like um, uh, gametes, right? The binary is shattered. There is no longer a binary. Binary isn't one two one two one two one two one two one two three one two one two one two. No, binary is one two to infinity. So long as there's one difference, one person who is not in that, the binary doesn't exist. So let's go, Demon Mama. Um, uh, Joe. Um, and then uh, yeah. I don't know how you pronounce Sewer Sewer syndrome syndrome. I I don't know how to pronounce this. Sewer is it Sewer syndrome? Sewer Sewer. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, um, I feel like what, what Alice is describing is like a is sort of just like stating a phenomena that occurs, um, which is true. People do hear a deep voice and they assume this person is a male, regardless of whether that's actually true. And in fact, um, this they might not even know that they're assuming that they're male. They just they don't have any concept of sex or gender and they go, that's the one I don't want to fuck and uh, or whatever. And it's like, OK, well, that's not how we're trying. You know, I mean, I would hope that our, our uh, general understanding of these things in the name of progress would move beyond something like that. The reality is that using the depth of your voice, like literally I could go tomorrow and take my money. Uh, no, no, I refuse to give you time. I'm addressing you after you're done talking. Yeah, go for it. Um, the, uh, the if you go and take a if I go tomorrow and I get, you know, laser, uh, Laser voice uh, shaving tracheal shave whatever I can't remember the name of surgery. Uh, there, I will have a throat that resembles and, re and creates the exact um, pitch as anybody else. But that would not make people assuming that I'm like that I'm you know X X female. Correct? They would be wrong. They would be reading my gender expression and making wrong assumptions about biological sex. That doesn't matter. This is why this becomes incoherent. This is why I'm saying it's an incoherent structure. So we should we should divorce these concepts. Why would we continue using a, a flawed system like that? We don't need to have these these things together. If somebody you know the way that I look at it is genderism is a is a very person very the bottom left is talking to you in your Twitch chat. Wait, who? What? Which person? I don't even know what this person's name is. Riverboat. Red Charlotte. Oh, I was so angry. Oh, sorry. I was making fun of you earlier because you thought that you could come on here and actually like just make descriptive claims without getting absolutely destroyed for not moralizing every single thing you said. <laughs> I'm, yeah, we were we were sharing your pain. I'm sorry. That have my level of experience. So I'm gonna show you something. Ready? Um, we're gonna play the game of voice and what their differences in voice are. So first, we're gonna drop my pitch. Sound weird. Same. We have being deeper. You're, you're making a claim. About voice is, uh, you're making a claim uh, about voice meaningless details. Yeah, right. Right. Let me a vocal fold. That is what testosterone does. If you are affected, the testosterone affects that I have to tone. Yes. It gives me a voice that's um, we're like a hike. Uh, okay. Well, it is associated with hormones, breasts, uterus. Yeah, it's a signal. And like started realizing, oh, trans people can just be like oh, she normal back. people. Nice. Oh, that's pretty cool, I guess. But I, I, so I agree on some bits. Mostly I agree. I think people, okay, I don't know how to give you my answer. I just know how to give you a answer. So an answer to the question about why we hate social, socially constructed as a term. Um, I think people love the idea of truth and this idea of being able to ground things in the objective. And so the idea of something not being um, objectively true and observable and graspable is very frightening to people. Um, and they somehow, uh, so Nietzsche talks about this in genealogy, uh, not in genealogy, in uh, Good and Evil, I don't remember its full name. Um, and he talks about how um, uh, things that are viewed as like true are viewed as morally good or morally superior. And I think that is still true of today. Things that are viewed, he actually says it in a really sexist way. He says, what is what if the truth is a woman? Um, and he's <laughs> implying that women are irrational and um, hard to observe and lie. And so he's saying like, what if the truth isn't this like firm thing that you believe it is? What if it's actually more like a woman and it's about like appearance and superficiality and that sort of thing? Like, what does that mean for the world? And so I think uh, this is why we hate socially constructed things. We're afraid of the world just being appearance. We're afraid of things not having any concrete meaning. And this relates okay, back back to this language of production and this idea that everything has to have an end result. So this is a postmodern answer to your question um, about why we hate socially constructed things. We view them as morally inferior because they're not um, objectively true. Um, 
And then in regards to like how we use language, that's the only thing I would disagree with. And I think this is just a preference thing. Like for me, it's about using language less literally. It's about viewing the power of language to have fun and to use words in like clever ways that gives them a, multi like multi a multiplicity of meanings, um, which uh, destabilizes the ground on which we actually understand things and forces us to be more curious and investigate the stimuli that we're looking at independently. Because you can't get away from categorization. Our brain needs it to function. We have a cognitive economy. We cannot look at every single individual thing and take it at face value. That's not how our brains work. But what you can do is after someone categorizes you, you can play with that concept in a way that makes them, that demands attention and demands investigation and demands a, a further, more independent and uh, uh, like more direct inquiry. That, uh, that aren't thought terminating. Right. Um, that basically like we don't, spurred. Con the only thing when we're, we're not terminating, no terminating gender, no terminating anything, <laughs> no termination. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, hopefully we could terminate things like genocide. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm trolling. I'm trolling. The, 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 I mean, obviously, but no. Okay. Uh, no, I just wanted to say though, I, I think, I think you could probably, we can probably find agreement, Joe, on the idea that like, um, there are like, we can categorize, uh, categorizations and I think that there are categories that are valuable to be strict right like again like I said with the pure water thing chemistry it's actually pretty good for us to have certain relatively strict definitions in certain circumstances not always not universally but there are certain things where it's very helpful for us to be able to have rigid definitions but there are other things which which are not that case right um, like I, I don't know that it would be useful for us to have like um like i don't know oxygen uh have like 15 different meanings in a scientific circumstance it would probably be better to have different words for that um yeah. but yeah but um or or even different categories for that sort of thing but there are definitely circumstances where i would agree with you i think that um for multi like highly multifaceted or um uh abstract concepts it's really good for us to have multiple ways of describing things like super valuable because it allows us to understand different pieces of a truth that might be too hard to digest in one single word or one single phrase uh so like i mostly agree with the like why people uh are like with um what you said about why people are afraid of the concept of social constructs right but also like i think a big part of it is people don't understand like they, they they sort of misunderstand what a social construct even is because they what they think in their head is if you say something if you declare that something is a social construct yeah you're like you're declaring it is not real right but like that's like nobody who calls things social constructs are saying that this thing doesn't exist and doesn't interact with social life and daily life and reality right but like every time i've explained this to someone like normal people not discord people right they're like oh okay like that makes sense right like when you say social construct it's like oh it's not like like a, a chair here exists right but like the concept of a chair doesn't exist in nature right but chairs still exist right and like oh okay that makes sense um so like because they feel extremely invalidated when you say like something they believe in is like they essentially just hear that you're calling it fake and dumb, right? So, Which, like, isn't really true. Go, go ahead. Well, no, no, sorry, please, go ahead, Jack. Um, so I was, I, I, I was just going to say, like, it, to Joe's point, too, I think a lot of people get scared that the universe and the world is really, really big. Globert, I feel that way so much, be, too, but I try not like, to think too much on it. Because I don't know, that's just me getting a really big head. They want to be able to understand something um, quickly, intuitively and i i think that the reality of our situation as beings that exist in this universe is far more complicated than that like even just looking at like a, the chair example charlotte just gave like you look at a chair you're like okay this is fairly straightforward you start getting down to but how does it work and then you start learning oh well it takes grab you know to be fair the chair analogy i think is a philosophy 101 i think it's like very commonly used when describing universals as a chair Sub substances and structures and then you break it down even further you're like oh uh, molecules cool atoms what are those okay you keep breaking it down and breaking it down and then you're like wait wait a minute like nine 
90%, 99% of this chair, like just is empty space. What the fuck? Like you, you start breaking it down until it's both ben useless MC, and scary. Five pounds. Um, and I FC think that there is possibly like that when you can, uh, you can apply that to social constructs too. It gets real scary when you start breaking down an entire social construct with nothing that allows you to understand it in a larger way. And a lot of it is is fabricated, which makes it weird when you have been raised up in a society that tells you that it is fixed and solid and real. Yeah, so so I think um, Jack, because it's as probably it's I'm guessing it's me and how I phrased it, um, which like I feel like my question wasn't quite answered in the way I, I, I was looking um, because. Uh, what Jack is alluding to is that, like, there was a large portion of society who loves these uh, constructs, right? Like, who who accept these constructs, right? Like, you can tell them it's socially created, right? Like, our ideas of gender or our ideas of race, right? Um, but they have a use for them, and they like being able to put people in these things, right? But on the left, specifically on the left, um, we we have a a, a fear, like the, the uh, not even a fear, but like it's more that um, uh, we we have a mission of breaking these things down, right? The far left you go, the more things you want to break down, right? So yes, some people are wanting to uh, break down um, these concepts of gender. Some people want to uh, break down um, uh, concepts of race, right? Like um, and other things that I'm not thinking of right now. I'm sorry, I, um, uh, but. Yeah, like in, in those spaces, we're, uh, we're, we're trying to dismantle these things, right? But in the end, in the end, um, it's very possible that the best that we could do is actually recategorize things, like put people in different, uh, maybe more uh, fair uh, uh, categories. Okay, I, I'd love to hear from you, Joe, but maybe different, more, more fair categories. But like, um, because people have a, a, a need to do these things, a need to put people within some sort of bucket, right? Um, uh, like, isn't it possible that if we do uh, begin to recategorize them, right? Uh, if we do create something that's more equitable, um, then can we just repeat the uh, mistakes of the past? Go ahead, Joe. You really want to turn my head off. Go ahead. Scott Bradley, nine dollars <laughs> and ninety-nine cents. Being less expressive. Do you think um, it's no, too much of a stretch to that, believe uh, Demon Mama intends to make discourse more toxic and confuse people on issues? What if she is anti-trans and hiding her power level? I don't. That's Everything impossible to determine. Now, to be uh, fucking annoying and just focus on what I know, right? Um, Wittgenstein talks about the difference between like knowledge and certainty. And certainty are things that you found your like they create the foundation for your entire worldview. So when you're trying to convince someone about to change their mind about something of which they are certain, it's very different to changing their mind about something of which they have knowledge of. Because with knowledge, you can win with argument. You can persuade them with facts and, and compelling argumentation. With certainty, it looks more like religious conversion. So when you're telling someone that everything in their world that they believe is true is like uh, con socially constructed, which they take to mean like we're all sitting around going, hmm, I wonder, I wonder what we should say this is. What you're actually saying is like over time, using language, we've created definition and meaning and an understanding of how we use these terms in context. That's all that socially constructed means. Um, but you're going to have a hard time convincing people uh, that everything is socially constructed because that is a huge change of worldview for most people. I and I don't like the mixing of categories. I don't understand. Uh oh. I don't know why you would, you wouldn't sort people into different categories. You would change concepts. It's a bit of a chicken and an egg. It's unclear whether categories come before concepts or concepts come before categories, but you wouldn't just expand the category. Categories already have fuzzy edges. You would need to ameliorate. What, what, what are your definitions of uh, categories and concepts? Conceptual engineering, which is actually very bad. Could you, could you, what, what are your uh, definitions <laughs> of categories and concepts then maybe, um, yeah. Category is a, a group of people with uh, that are viewed to share some sort of characteristics and a concept are uh, the grammar and rules we put around that concept, how they act in context, how we're allowed to use the word. So if you asked me how I was feeling and I said I'm feeling um, computer, you would be a bit confused at first because there are unspoken rules about how I can use that sort of language. And so, like, for instance, with pronouns, when people were first adjusting to pronouns, even in uh, academic work, when her started being used as, like, a default, people would react very strongly and emotionally to it because they registered it as nonsense, not as um, 
wrong, just as nonsense. It didn't make sense. It didn't follow the grammatical. How do I transport ore over a river? Can you build that? bridges? Okay. Um, sure. I, I, did you have your hand up, Alice? I want to make sure I, I didn't skip you. Yeah, uh, Joe kind of covered what I was going to say. I was just like, this is what my original argument was like the, mm. that, you know, we have something now, we need to change it. We need to acknowledge what we have now and how to change it rather than say, just, you know, prescribe something different without acknowledging what we have now. And conceptual engineering is a totally different bag of like shit that you do not want to get into. Uh, yeah. Mm. All right, Demon? Yeah, I mean, I I guess uh, I feel like there's a couple of potential different conversations that are happening. Um, I, I don't really agree with the idea that the left is all about like deconstructing things. I think that deconstruction is sometimes a necessary part of building something better. Um, there are probably certain structures that will have to be deconstructed in order for us to make any progress. But I think there's a lot that will just simply continue to grow that have already, we are in the fledgling stages of those con of the I don't know if concepts are the right word. Maybe that's a maybe I'm stepping on a linguistic uh, thingamajig. Landmine. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe some nerd shit. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but but there are uh, political ideas. There are ca categorizations. There are um, these things that we take for granted now that we make assumptions about the way that we categorize people. I personally, when it comes to politics, I think we should be much um, less rigid with the way that we categorize people, because uh, I think that 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 our desire to categorize people rigidly often comes um, out of a desire to be able to dominate and uh, exert supremacy over them. Um, so I tend to think that we should uh, recognize that like humans aren't as uh, like clean as we like to think that they are. Um, that like our categorizations are very are likely very flawed. Um, for example, race, uh, for example, gender, for example, um, yeah, hell, even sex, all these things we've talked about. I think we should we should um, be open to reforming these pretty significantly um, if it's going to provide us a lot of um, value. Um, and it, I, I tend to think that it would in most of these cases. Um, but I do think there are some categorizations that will always exist. But I mean, surely we can acknowledge there are better ways of categorizing things. I mean, um, we've we've done this in, I mean, God, there's thousands of times. Uh, how long did we exist in a world where the best way to find out so, how way to contact somebody was to look them up in a giant, wasteful yellow book that would be delivered to you every month and you would have to search. And now we just are like, uh, fuck, what's my friend's, what's my friend's phone number? Swip, swip, swip. Okay, cool. We got a new way of categorizing this and it's got everybody's stuff. It's their name card instead of a phone book. There's all kinds of different changes that we make to the ways that we categorize it and, and organize our lives. And we should embrace that. Mm. Okay. Uh, Jesus. So, what the uh, fuck? Uh, since we have two uh, um, gender abolitionists, do, 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 is there anything you want to say to uh, Joe or anyone else? The other two of you. Unbelievable. Are... No, I mean, no, I mean, you're here, right? Um, is it, now. Now he's trying to get me to fight. I yes, all the time, every time, every day, yes. Um, but if there's something blood you want sports to... panel, blood sports panel. <laughs> what? I mean, I have a question. So, Joe, mm -hmm. um, do you, do you, when you think gender abolition, do you think that we're going to stop you from dressing how you are now? Like, do we think that you're going to stop? No, like, no. okay. So, so, I guess I don't understand. No. What's your main contention? My contention, generally, with gender abolition, is exactly what the problem for majority of this panel has been: is that gender abolitionists are doing without knowing, which is fine in most cases, particularly in terms of our advocacy. But in terms of um, if you're trying to abolish a concept, but you can't tell me what that concept is, um, the the arguments for gender abolition are all rooted, like in terms of academically, are rooted in extremely different, um, extremely different definitions of what a woman is or what gender is. And I'm talking specifically, like uh, a lot of my work is feminist work, so I look more at gender abolition through the lens of. Uh, when I build a bridge, am I just building floors over the ocean, if basically, you have a completely or different idea of what gender is? and you're all trying to abolish, like, what are you trying to abolish? You're asking me, do I think it's about abolishing femininity? No, but I've read six or seven or eight postmodern accounts of what gender is and why we should abolish it. So tell so, me what you would like to abolish. So can I tell you that I'm gonna go for what Firestone does? You know, can tell I go me, for- Tell me, tell me, tell me. No, I'm saying, can, I, can, I, pick a, can I pick a feminist thinker? thinker? Does, that, does, does picking some sort of common point help you? 
when I say that I want um, to. I mean, it, it, it would help me if I necessarily agree with that conceptualization of gender. And I think if you're mounting an entire movement and you're trying to abolish this key concept, which is used within a judicial system to gain representation, then that better be a conceptualization that most people agree with. Right, because right. If you if you abolish something based on one concept, but the rest of the world has a different conceptualization of gender, then what are you actually doing? Well, right. right now they have an incoherent conceptualization, and they don't even know what they're talking about. And we write these laws that are nonsensical. It, Correct. Like, it's horrible. Uh, wh I think I'm just going to change. Uh, like I'm just going to change the terminology I use now to make it more badass. I'm not going to be a gender abolitionist anymore. I'm going to be a gender ascensionist. There you go. That's my new term. I'm I'm coining it right now, and uh, that's TM. You owe me 25 cents if you ever use it because it's going to be badass. I tell you, this is the movement that's taking the world by storm. And what I mean is that we need to fucking move beyond this shit ass definition of gender that we have right now. And I think that there is a better model, which is that we acknowledge- But what is that definition, Demon Mama? Wait, what is the you definition? You say we have a shit ass right definition. Now? What is the definition you're talking about? It is a it's an incoherent, in literally yes, impossible- the description of the uh -oh. definition, but what is the definition? Wait, what is the definition? There isn't a single one. We have a hodgepodge okay, so and the hodgepodge is the definition. What, I'm trying what, to what, what I'm trying, trying to, to abolish the hodgepodge. What definition are you using? What definition do well, I, I don't, use? I, oh, I mean, if me, I was to write no. out like a formal, like philosophical, I mean, I'm not a formalist. Okay, I don't want to get baited into this shit, okay? I think there's a slight complication in that. What are you identifying as? Like, I understand that someone is, it's a bit of like, when I, because like, I, I have heard this argument before and I've written it out and it automatically becomes a tautology in that you can't identify as something without knowing what that thing is if you make I, I no I understand like honestly oh, I, I went around you. and around and around uh, listen trust me I I promise you that uh oh hi destiny um yeah uh, I promise you uh with that context being perfect yeah I've gone around and around and around on this topic in fact I've been challenged by a number of people on this I don't think that it's like uh, any sort of like well, other terms have been used. I, don't, I even think I was wrong to identify it as a, as a tautology. I think it's very possible linguistically. Um, the statement that like, uh, oh God, here we go. We're going to start it over again. But the idea that a woman is anyone who identifies as a woman is a perfectly valid definition. Um, and uh, you can take it up. Like, I'm, I'm, I completely understand it's a, like a, a definition that might work for you, but in terms of no, like it's not, it's not about, it's not about it working for me. It's not, it a, it's not logically flawed. I've it had, I've gone over this like yeah. 15 times. So, um, Joe, take over while you're yelling at, um, um, Dima. I'll be right back. I just need to go to the bathroom, I'm but not... I'll get back. No, Joe, um... Joe I, I have a solution here. Okay. Let's, let's just embrace, uh, gender piratry. Okay. All of us, we can be gender pirates sailing the wide seas of life together, doing whatever the fuck we want. And then it'll be fine. We'll just be pirates. It'll be cool. We can hang out. We can like walk gang planks or whatever the fuck pirates do. Um, it'll be a great time. Yeah, no, I agree. I just, I, all I'm saying is, is like when you say you identify as a woman, what is a woman? Yeah, what does that it's mean? Something that you yeah, identify as. Yeah, no, no, what? a woman, a woman is a, uh, is a identifier. You are allowed to identify with many different identifiers and what a woman means to so you. So a symbol. What, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. The symbol represents a concept. So yeah, but the symbol represents a concept that changes constantly. That is that is inherently that's, contextual. That's true of all concepts, though. Yes. Yes. Okay. You're getting, you're getting Wait. Here, I just have I just have a, such a quick. I'm so curious about this topic. Do you think that anybody could identify as anything? No. Well, I mean, I think they probably could, but I don't think it would be very useful for them to do so. So but I'm talking about building a useful definition. Sure. So when somebody, so do we have a lot of people in society that identify as chairs? Oh, here we go. Uh, this is, this is the type of thing that I like, I think is like, this is like literal trolling a chair. Now a chair is an incredibly, first of all, we all know that if you want, I can just walk you to the end of like my line of question. Uh, if you think I'm just no, trying no, to troll you. Really. Well, cause oh, if, yeah, if the yeah. question upsets you, I can just walk you to I mean, if you, no, no, if you ask me, if you ask me a question and then you are like, ha it's going to be my hand. Gotcha. Well, no, no, I, I literally just really offered to, if, if, if it was just a, wait. you know, if it was just a, uh, you know, like a hypothetical thing, you wanted to come in and be like, Hey, you want me to answer that question for you, laddie? Demon. Okay. So I literally, I'm, I'm offering to just go to the end of this like dialogue tree so that it doesn't feel like I'm trying to set up a gotcha. Because yeah. I'm just curious. Go for it. So, because Go my question is going to the end of the dialogue tree for us. 
Okay, so my question would be is, could anybody identify as a chair? Now, obviously, I think most people in here would say no, obviously not. And the reason why is because even if chair is just some arbitrary category or whatever, it represents some like underlying concept. Now, there are many different types of chairs. They are chairs of different colors. Some have three legs, some have four legs. But broadly speaking, we kind of sort of have this category of chair that we understand uh, means a certain thing. And for a person to say, oh, well, I am a chair, like doesn't really make much sense. Like not every concept can just be anything. Otherwise, no concept would be anything, right? Like they have to have some sort of content within the concept for it to be meaningful. So it just seems weird to say that like anybody could just say, I am a woman. And then we pretend that like that concept is devoid of all meaning because it might have changed a little bit through Throughout history, like for instance, the definition of an automobile or a car has changed throughout history. But that just because something changes isn't an argument that it doesn't exist or it doesn't mean anything. But no, right. but I never have made the argument that it doesn't exist or that it doesn't mean anything. But that's exactly I what you said earlier. So Joe no, asked a question and I, you responded. You said, "Well, yeah, but this this uh, definition is fluid and it changes and, and it means a lot of different things. It's a hodgepodge of things. Yeah, so like, it, yeah, it, it can it be. Particularly, but. it's particularly nuanced. If you look at the history of gender and the way that we use these words, again, like I said before at the beginning of this conversation, which I understand you may have missed, um, is that that gender as it currently exists is an absolute hodgepodge that most people don't even know what it means. So the problem so when you I say things, is, no, you what I think is. Hold on, well, I was talking. I know you're, you're in the excited, but um, the what what I think is that when we're talking about womanhood, that womanhood is incredibly, incredibly difficult to try and define, and most definitions that you try to use for womanhood are not actually going to do a very good job at capturing all women. And the problem anyway, we probably I'm not done. I know, I'm not done, but we probably shouldn't try to make some sort of rigid definition for woman because we recognize that it is not only highly contextual, it changes from country to country, it changes from time to time. This is, this is much more than something like a chair, which is an object that we identify for the purpose of like sitting in or selling. Uh, woman, we're not trying to identify, uh, I mean, hopefully we've moved on past the idea of like of selling, buying and selling women. Um, but we have this as a, as a, this is a term that exists to help us identify and express ourselves. And therefore, I think that we should use a definition that allows people to self-identify that way. And that is very helpful, in my opinion. That okay. is a very useful way. And it, it, it irons out a lot of the problems of other definitions that are highly exclusive. How do, you, how do you deal with the fact that if you say woman, 98% of people in the world instantaneously have a coherent concept of what that means? I don't think they have a coherent concept. I don't think you have the evidence to claim that. You cl you claim that. Lots of people claim that, but it's just a feeling. I would love to see you actually do that. We can look at references to women in pop culture or media across a variety yeah, of different... Yeah, and guess what? They're going to vary. What people think of when they think of a woman is, is massive. And guess what? Some people will see someone who they think isn't a woman and might be a woman by a whole bunch just of different Just because standards. somebody sees somebody and they aren't a woman because they might get like a different like part of gender expression or a social cue incorrect doesn't necessarily invalidate the entire class though. Somebody, How can you make that argument if you do not even know what you would define as a woman? I mean, I this can give you problem. like broad definition. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go. No, I was just gonna say, this is once again the evaluative, evaluative versus normative thing, right? So like the ability to evaluate whether or not someone is a woman is not the same as a normative concept of womanhood. But I think, if you're saying what you're saying there is that we don't need to know the concept of woman to be able to use it uh, in pragmat in pragmatic ways, but that's not aligned to your definition. So that's Linda Zarelli's argument of doing without knowing, which is gender normalism. Gender doesn't represent anything concrete, but we can use it. But that is not saying that if you identify as a woman, that makes you a woman. That is saying that I act in collective with other women for unless, particular juridical unless... things. We decide, which is, I mean, I, I, I assume that everyone came here not just to state things that are v like vaguely true based on our understanding of the world, but that we are here to advocate for things. I advocate sure. for a definition of womanhood that is much, much broader than our current one because our current one is incoherent. Nobody knows really what they mean when they say that. They impress so broadening their own it will make it more coherent. Yes. In this case, yes, absolutely. There are there are all kinds of things where broader definitions are more coherent. For example, but given that it's a normative concept, it will always exclude. So, how is broadening it broadening the understanding? Are you broadening who is included in the category? Are you broadening what are you broadening? What? What I'm part sorry, of that didn't make sense? Are you broadening the definition? What? No, I'm sorry. I don't understand included? what you're asking. Here, let me let me let me give you this. We largely agree as a society. Wait, no, no, no. Wait, make her respond to that question. That was an no, important question. Well, I am trying to respond to the question. I think you just said you didn't was... understand it. Now you want to talk more. <laughs> Have no, Joe explain I'm the question to, again. <laughs> I'm trying to. Okay, okay fine. Uh, go Is ahead. It, uh, do you, you want to do what Destiny's asked you to do? 
<laughs> I'm just, I'm just... I didn't I didn't state it clearly. So it was actually my fault. Are you broadening the category that the concept is represented by? Are you broadening who falls under the concept or are you broadening the definitions associated with the concept that help like what associated rules exist with the concept? So who is included or what rules are associated with the concept? What are you broadening? I mean, I I think that we should that I I'm like I'm aiming to change the way that we use the term woman that's the way that i would describe okay, so it. I, rules. I, yeah yeah the the rules by which i don't think that we should in general uh use identifiers like and i i used i i will say this again and i think this is a perfectly coherent argument and i don't really get why people get mad at this but uh if they do i could, i'm more than happy to explain we don't tell other people what their name is Though we do have rules for what a name is, we do have rules for like things like legal name, for example, which can be useful in certain concepts and usually is much more strict than what we go for by name. However, we don't tell people what their name is. We don't tell people who they are or what they are in general. Now, there are some limitations, like for example, uh, we might have for the sake of medicine, say, hey, you uh, have uh, celiac disease or something like that, and or you're celiac or whatever, but we usually don't do that. We usually are, are uh, we don't impress these things on other people. I don't think that, I think that the way that we use gender right now is largely um, not, it has no reference to the individual. Um, and I think yeah, that's bad. Th right. This, and this, argue, this comparison. We should use a definition of gender that allows for people to self-define and it will not only reduce all kinds of societal issues, um, but it also will help us to come to a deeper understanding of what gender even is in our society, of what we mean when we talk about gender. And so the definition I put, that I advocate for for gender is that gender should be seen as and treated as an identifier that can be self-declared and usually based on somebody's own internal calculus for why they come to that conclusion. And we don't have to tell them no because there's no value in telling them no. That's just, now, I would, th I would there's, say, li there's literally no value in this new thing you're creating. Like this might as well just no, be called like, is there value. is not, no, no, by definition, there is no value. If you're saying that no, anybody, yes, it is true. You're saying that anybody can claim to have some internal feeling and that feeling is unique to them. That means it doesn't mean anything. Like going by no, your definition, one of two things, excuse me, can I please finish talking? So going by your definition, like two different things could happen. Either one, every single person on the planet could say, oh, I'm a woman. In which case, your category is totally worthless. Like, well, what does it matter? Like, if everybody identifies as a woman, like, like nobody might as well be a woman. Or two, anyway, though. excuse me, People please let me finish right talking. Now. I know that you're excited. Please let me finish talking. Or two, the secondary oh, thing is... Prime, are you just going to let her cut me off like no, that? That was no, incredibly no, rude. <laughs> okay, or the second thing is, everybody on the planet could identify as their own unique gender, in which case it's basically just become what I said earlier, it's like a fourth name. Like, I don't think the comparison to name is valid. A name isn't created to be, like, the reason why the comparison works is because the name is created to literally be an individual identifier. It's to, supposed to identify an individual. Gender is a category that's supposed to encompass multiple individuals. They're two totally disanalogous things. You can shake your head as much as you want, but it's absolutely no, true. Because so, no, okay. because okay. so you, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Are you, are you, Destiny, are you done? Okay. Yeah, I'm done. No, All I'm right. talking. Great, fine. Uh, Dear Mom, respond. But we got to get some other people in after that. Sure, um, yeah, so fine. we got. I'm gonna get Alice for a second after this. Alice, Jack, and Joe as well. Okay. Yeah. So um, when it comes to like, there are, are all kinds of like, we actually already have this. We have people with many names, and names are um, longer or shorter depending on your culture. There are a lot of people named John Smith in America. It doesn't exactly do a super good job of identifying an individual because guess what? It's contextual. Names are contextual. You have to know, oh, it's the John Smith that lives here. There's all kinds of extra information that you need. I think it's perfectly rational to treat uh, gender as functionally uh, a name. Uh, if you want to call it a fourth name, it's a name that talks about something different, that talks about your expression and your relationship to a a whole bunch of different things that we that are so broad that we have a really hard time trying to boil that down. Now, uh, is it possible that there's other terms that you could use? Sure, we could maybe just invent a new term. But I think that the way that we use gender right now is not very particularly useful and causes a lot of harm to people. Um, and I think that we would be better off seeing it as an identifier that can be declared. And just real quick, because I want to address the, 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 this like suddenly forgotten point of comparing it to like attack helicopters or chairs or whatever. The reason why we don't generally agree that it's like cool for somebody to just declare themselves a chair is because a chair is an object that we use to identify for a purpose. Like we try to say, chair hey, is not an what? object. A chair is a category. A particular chair is an object, but the category okay. of chair is a universal. Uh, category. It's not okay. An yes, that you. 
Uh, if you, just like a woman a, can be like an object, but the category of so, woman is not a. Uh, okay, I, okay. Two different things. I mean that's the penetry is whatever. It's not the, penetry. The is the fundamental uh, to what you're talking. Oh, about. Okay, whatever. The, 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 okay. You, all right. All right. So, uh, all right. Now we've all interrupted each other. Great. Uh, now we're even. Now, hooray! Okay. <laughs> but can I can I just finish my thought? Like we, <laughs> the reason why we don't usually think that it's legitimate for someone to call like be like I am an attack helicopter is because you can look at that and go, okay, well here's what an attack helicopter actually is. It's useful for us to have a rigid definition and what i'm arguing is that it is not useful for us to have a rigid definition of womanhood it isn't useful for us in fact it can cause a lot of harm because the moment because when you try to build a super rigid um definition that is not contextual that is not uh or that is you know not increasingly contextual obviously all things are all languages by its nature are contextual but to different degrees uh if you have too rigid of a definition you actually can start to to have some serious issues as we see we acknowledge this nobody here i don't think is like a is like a trans denialist that there are huge issues that come from forcing people into specific gender roles that are associated with gender i think we all here will acknowledge that gender is pretty fucking strict in our society and that has some pretty major problems with it wait how can it be both case? strict and undefined at the same time there are all kinds of. In I said it was incoherent, not undefined. I think you're definitely. I mean, I do sorry, think I'm that. I do think that. Um... Okay. Okay. So hold on. All right. Uh, this is another thing. All right. That's happening. And I'm going to do the same thing I just did. All right. And I, I see your hands. Don't worry. I'm going to get to you. Um, but <laughs> um, I'll give you another choice. So it looks like uh, Bosch must have joined us as well. So again, um, only if the panelists here want. So and it has to be sure. unanimous, okay? Yeah. Yes, I need yes. to go to the bathroom, but yes. Okay, sure, sure. Let's go. Destiny. Let's throw the gas on the floor. Don't ask me. My, I literally just joined, so leave it to the other people. Okay. All right, Joe. All right. All right. While we're while we're waiting. All right, Destiny. All right. Food take. All right. Okay. Now I'm here to defend myself. All right. Do you uh, think that having food being subsidized is a fine idea for a policy? Maybe. Why like, are we asking any questions? Wait. This is your chance for all of you to say what you were going to say without me interrupting a million times or Demon Mama interrupting. Go. I think Demon um, Mama I, is um, not in. Oh, River, but you go, you go, you go, because I want to talk to Demon <laughs> Mama. Okay, all right. Um, so, 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 uh, while we're waiting, uh, Alice, do you want to? Did you want to respond to Demon Mama or? Uh, I wanted to respond to Demon I Mama. I just cut off okay. Riverboat. I just cut off Riverboat. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so Riverboat, Riverboat, did you want to go? Yeah. So basically, just this this idea. I just want to introduce it to the rest of the panel. Is that. Part of what we're arguing here is very, um, like, Western-centric. It's, again, arguing about, like, our very, a very specific societal context that, like, might not necessarily apply to all different societies' uh, contexts of gender, right? Like, you can have different constructions of gender that are not based on sex or are not based on sexual characteristics. Um, you can have concepts of gender that are based on what people actually do within society. It can be more of a societal role that someone actively takes on. Um, and I think that, you know, we, we can talk about maybe how there are different ways that that can be, imp gender might be implemented in society that could be better. Um, but like, yeah, like a lot of this, um, like definitional semantic talk, I don't, I don't think it's actually it is, all that useful. It is entirely useful because gender only exists in the realm of language. It is discursively constructed. You actually like it is. Unfortunately, there is no way around it. And the exact thing you're talking about, language is the answer to that. So like the postmodern mm -hmm. conceptions of gender and the push to, to push gender as something that is performative is the answer to the fact that gender is not universal and has lots of different meanings. So I only I only react to that because people mm -hmm. constantly say, oh, it's semantics. And it's literally well, my whole life. And it actually is the answer to like a lot yeah. of things. And I, I don't mean to belittle it by calling it a semantic issue. What I What I mean is like, we could be having a completely different conversation about this if we were talking about it in a different language with a different like societal context behind it Do and you, history behind it. So, so, okay, I, so I have to challenge this because I hear this a lot, but I feel, like, I, feel like it's, I feel like it's not really true. I feel like if we were to go across the vast majority of societies on the planet, there's going to be like some, like if we show like a woman and a man wearing somewhat traditional, it can be Eastern garb, it can be Western garb, it can be whatever, um, based on both like gender, expression so the things they're wearing the way they carry themselves and like the um 
like the actual like secondary sexual characters in the structure of the body, but like most people have a pretty coherent definition um, of like, whoa, well, like this is a, or, or at least an understanding of like, oh, that's a woman, that's a man. I, I feel like yeah, you run into a lot of problems when we start off with this like, what is, what is I think a really radical take, the idea that like, but, oh, well, everybody's got a totally different understanding of what male and female is, when that doesn't really seem to well, track to, to reality so, at all. I'm, I'm just gonna well, male like, and female kind of is different put, the, put this idea out there that like, when you say like, oh, people would have a pretty good idea. Yeah, within that context. But like, if you showed somebody like a, a male or female and they're, or, or how they're traditionally dressed in one society and you showed that to somebody from another society, they might not be able to recognize. Um, it, it is contextual. Sure, but while that's possible, so this is what I'm really curious about. So let's say that you show, mm -hmm. do you know Sneaky? No idea. Okay, so Sneaky was a player on C9 who does I don't think they're. I don't think Sneaky's trans. I think Sneaky for a while just. Sneaky's not trans. No, Sneaky's not trans. Okay. Sneaky's not trans. Just, it, just cross dressing, right? For their cosplay stuff? Yeah. yeah. So um, that's somebody where if you were to show somebody a picture of that, they would immediately go, like, oh, okay, that's a woman 100%. They would assume it immediately. Um, mm -hmm. But if you were to disrobe Sneaky, I mean, this is a little weird to talk about somebody else, but like if you were to start showing them like pictures of them naked, well, now their, their identifier would change. They would be like, oh, wait, well, hold on. That's not a woman. Okay, so, so if so this, you're, if, you're, so you're what I'm asking, about showing somebody naked. Yeah. So what I'm asking here is okay. like, if that definition or understanding is changing once they're like getting more information about the person, what process is going on there if a person is not appealing to some underlying understanding of like the content of male or female? Like, what what is I mean, happening? You're doing like? it right now, though. You're like literally, you're conflating sex and gender in this. Holy conversation. shit! Wait, I think my Discord is bugging out because the voice is like bugging. It sounds you sound really similar to Demon Mom right now. It, it, it well, so wait, to to kind of hold, answer. Wait. Could I could I jump in on this when there's a free moment? Uh, I, I'll, I'll make my point real quick, and then I need to use the bathroom, so that would be perfect. Yeah, go for it. I'm just I'm curious what you think is happening there. Yeah, no, I I think that one of the things I, is that the more information you have on a certain individual, the more accurately you might be able to gender them. Like I I don't think that's really controversial, right? But when you like, say accuracy and gendering, you're implying that there is a truthful like underlying fact of the matter of what the gender is because you're getting more well, it, accurate. This is what the implication so, is. Sorry. So it also depends on whether you're talking about sex or gender, and that's kind of what we started talking about in the first place. Let's because, say we're talking sex here. Okay, so if we're talking about sex, well then you'd have to break down like, well, okay, what are their genitals? Okay, well their genitals seem to be male. Okay, but what about what about their DNA? We don't we don't know what their DNA is just by looking at them. So oh okay we'll give them we'll give them a blood test. We'll see what their DNA is. Oh okay well their DNA is XX, but it, they have some sort of hormonal condition. Let, let let's check out their hormones. Okay but so like you start breaking it down into like all of these different levels where like the more information you have on somebody the less like it actually makes sense to be like putting them into a male or female category um in in a lot of cases you know okay uh, i won't argue yeah. but who wants to go all right watch, bathroom time okay um yeah okay i i feel like we split hairs on this also hey my name is vosh i'm cisgender i apologize for my existence okay so <laughs> When we, when the earlier somebody, I don't know anyone's names except for you, Destiny D Mom, of course. Um, but earlier, um, it was said that the more you know about a person, you can generally accurately guess a person's gender. So the reason for that is because most people are cisgender. While there's not an inherent correlation or causative element between sex and gender, you can generally make some inferences based on people's appearances, which will point you towards their sex, and that will usually overlap with a person's gender, assigned gender at birth, you know. So that's generally what people do when they make guesses. Most people, maybe even everybody, does some amount of uh, assuming gender in their day-to-day -day life. Because most people are cis, and because there are a lot of normative and social elements that go along with our understanding of people's genders that influence how we treat them even from the get-go, before we can even ask a person's pronouns or whatever. When we talk about what the definition of gender is, I feel like there are two, it seems like they conflict, but they really don't ideas in the minds of most progressive people, whether they're trans or cis or whatever. And that's usually thus. Gender matters to me, but gender doesn't really matter. And while I think those two things seem sort of initially contradictory, they make sense when you 
unpack whatever that meaning is. It's usually when I think of gender meaning something to me, it's a matter of my relationship to myself, my self identity, and more, maybe even more practically, when I tell other people what my gender is, when I tell them what my pronouns are, I'm telling them what block of behavior I want them to regard me with, how they should refer to me, how they should treat me. There's a set of social roles and expectations associated with one gender that I would rather be treated by than another. That obviously makes a pretty huge deal to trans people, which is why we try not to misgender them and what have you. But just because there's some personal utility to be derived from the distinction between whatever roles you'd get from one group of gendered norms to another, doesn't mean there's anything inherent about the process. There's a, uh, a quote from a person, that's as far as I'm going to get remembering this, saying sometimes the best thing that you can do to a question is to dissolve it rather than to resolve it. I feel like gender might be one of those. Wittgenstein. I don't know. Yep, huh? Wittgenstein. I said it's always, this conversation always comes back to Wittgenstein, doesn't it? Well, sure, because at the end of the day, every term refers to the collective understanding of it. I mean, you were talking about this earlier. What is a chair, right? Well, a chair is, how can you define a chair in a way that encompasses all chairs, but nothing that isn't a chair? It's impossible. You know, you're always relying on what people think something is. And if gender's that way, sure. But we make the prescriptive argument, because a lot of people do have understandings of gender which clash with p understandings other people hold. The, if you identify as a woman, you are one narrative is increasingly popular in America. As far as I can tell, it's probably within the next 50 years going to be, if not the, then a dominant understanding of what gender means. Um, and at that point, do all of the trans women suddenly then become women, where that narrative becomes dominant? No, we make the prescriptive argument here. We can derive more social utility from making gender as arbitrary as something to be defined by social self-identification, which I think would be better for most people, because any other definition falls flat. You go biological, you hurt a lot of people, you know? You go... Um, uh, presentative, like the Judith Butler performative gender argument. Well, does is a closeted trans person trans then? Just hmm? because it's, it's not presentative. It's not about presentation. Performance doesn't mean theatrical performance. It means performing tasks. It means performing a series of tasks which are associated with a gender that have no, they copy something, they imitate something that never really existed. Performance is the same as performing an operation. And actually, there would be a great detriment to every woman who uses the category of woman within the judicial system to fight for their rights to make gender this arbitrary nothing category it would have a huge detriment and trans women already are women we don't need to abolish women in order for trans women to be women trans women why? are already women why are wait, trans wait, wait, wait 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 hold on i wasn't making that argument at all i wasn't saying you have to abolish yeah, women it, it should be so gender should be so arbitrary it has nothing no meaning other than social identification well, I, ha I mean, I'm a gender abolitionist. It's a position that I and I imagine a number of other progressive people hold that ultimately gender is a destructive category that it doesn't actually serve us much benefit. So there what are is other the gender you're abolishing though, Vosh? Like, I, I honestly, I really agree with you, but this is like literally my whole thing. And I just want to know, like when you say that you're abolishing gender, what is it that you are abolishing? What is the strict definition given that all gender theorists haven't come up with a clear understanding of what gender is? So what is the understanding you have of what you are abolishing? Well, the, the broader understanding of gender abolitionism was that you wouldn't assign any social roles, tasks, or obligations, or expectations to a person based on their birth sex. Because that's functionally what gender does to people, you know? Yeah. You relate to your gender in different ways as you grow up, but most people's relationships to their gender is mostly a uh, doctor says XXXY at birth, you know, what set of clothes are you wearing? How are we going to treat you? What school are you going to go to, et cetera, et cetera. An ideal gender abolished world would be one where that doesn't happen, right? You know, you pop out a kid and it's like, uh, hey, they can do whatever they want. But if they want to go by other social identifiers as they grow older, that's great. As long as it's a conscious and, uh, you know, free choice that isn't coercive, as our current system definitely is. And Joe, that's my, that's my question to you is like, so there are things that got uh, ascribed to you because you are presumed to be a woman and there are things that and I'm gonna say something controversial I pass most of the time and most of the time people think that I am also just a woman they don't think I'm a trans woman they don't ascribe that to me most of the time so I get ascribed the things that society ascribes to women and I get the negative stereotypes that society ascribes to women and when I talk about gender abolitionism I'm talking about that concept of I don't want to be ascribed things societally just because I pass as a woman, just because I take hormones, just because whatever. I want to be able to not have those things happen. I don't want them to happen to other women. I don't want them to happen to men. That's what I talk about when I talk about gender abolition.
And the future genders okay. will be, are you a gamer or a weeb, you know? Yeah. Social exactly. categories that you fit into because of personal choices that you've made rather than... <clears throat> can I ask for trans people in this panel? Uh, is there anybody here that... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, Before ahead. you do that, I want, I want Joe to be able to respond. Then we can ask a question, please. Joe. Well, I don't really have a response other than, of course, I don't want gender roles and ger gender stereotypes and gender oppression to continue. I think the concept of gender is essential to ensuring that happens so long as the juris judicial system remains, where we need that categorization in order to gain representation. So, of course, I don't want oppression based on gender, but I think that uh, maybe I'm just misunderstanding because I'm looking at very specific ideas of gender abolition, but I think that... Um, I, I, I take a real issue as well with the idea that gender is something that is uh, construed based on shared trauma or shared oppression. I really don't like that definition of womanhood at all. Um, so I would agree, yes, we shouldn't have some sort of gender oppression, but I, I'm not sure. Sometimes people put the abolition. Mm, actually, let me think on it. Let me think about it. I okay. just want to say the what abolition happened? thing, this is like a, a uh, 500 years from now, maybe we reshuffle social priorities type of thing. In reality, yeah, I mean, no, I claim I'm, I'm a gender abolitionist, but I care about being a guy, you know? We have our preferences, we're gonna live with them, and as long as we have them, they should be respected. But in the long term, we should probably care a little less about this stuff. Not telling individuals to, but placing less social weight on it. We already do this. I mean, it used to be men and women, what we understood them to be, dressed and acted completely differently. I mean, 1950s America, you know, I mean a wall between the two. And nowadays, there's a lot more, you know, uh, ambiguity when it comes to expected performance on whether or not you're a man or a woman, self-identified or otherwise. So that's good. I mean, we probably should tear down those walls, no? Um, let's go to uh, Destiny. You had a question you want to ask? Yeah. What do we think about trans people that claim that they experience gender euphoria? So my, my question is like, so for people that say that like, um, we should abolish all the expectations or all the roles that go along with gender, for certain trans people that say that they have an experience of gender euphoria, so when they feel like they're treated in such a way societally that coincides with their um, gender identity, do like, how, how do we- I think, this, I think this comes down to what I'd consider to be like a, a really, really shallow understanding of gender. Um, the argument earlier was about like, is, is gender, um, I don't know, uh, is the, uh, I identify as a woman, therefore I am a woman, is that a tautology kind of thing, right? And I think we're kind of looking at gender in a, in, in a very sort of simplistic kind of surface level way that's like very sociological. Um, whereas I do think there are like inherent parts to gender. I think gender is like a, uh, a self schema. So like a framework we use to sort of categorize ourselves and it's based on both societal expectations and internal kind of uh, identity factors like psychological factors and so on that we sort of slot into uh, those sociological expectations and that the sociological expectations kind of feed back into. So it's like this weird little feedback loop. So if you're asking about like gender euphoria, like if we get rid of all these categories, right? If there's no way to tell kind of what gender somebody is, then there's going to be no sort of affirmation of that self schema as other people recognizing your self schema and treating you the way that you would expect to be. Could yeah, I so weigh in on that very briefly? Uh, yes, and then I'll go to Jack. I just want to say, I think people have ideas about who they are, gender, gamer, anything. And people get happy when they're treated in ways that conform with those ideas. I don't think that assigning roles to people based on their birth sex is the best way to procure those positive feelings. I think that even in a world where we assigned no inherent expectations to behavior, there are still ways for people to find categories, to make categories for themselves, ones based on their choices, and then to feel euphoric or happy or otherwise when they're affirmed in those ways. I mean, our concept of gender euphoria is usually framed around the fact that the, prior to them experiencing it, they were denied something, either a sense of recognition, self-identification, or in the cases for, um, you know, like transition, like biological transition, sometimes it's actually like a bodily change, but all of those things, the underlying criteria can still be achieved without gender needing exist. Um, it's really just a matter of allowing people to be happy and to be who they are. Okay. Yeah, uh, so yeah, please. the idea of gender euphoria can come at, like, you, you can get gender euphoria from any number of different places, whether it's people that you care about in your life treating you the way you want to be treated after having been denied such treatment for a long period of time, or, you know, just 
looking the way you want to be able to look. And for a lot of trans people, that would be a struggle regardless, you know, like it, it, it's hard to physically transition. Look, look, going through going through puberty two times, uh, not not great, especially when the second time you have like a job and adult responsibilities, not not ideal. Um, and so it, it can be a struggle and achieving something even for like a little bit of time. Yeah, it, it, your brain, your brain's like, good job. And you, you feel you feel nice about it. You know, a little, it's it's your brain patting you on the back a little bit, um, bringing your 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 identity and your your body into somewhat uh, a bit of harmony. And I, at least that's what that's how I interpret in, it. Anyway. In order for that to happen, there would have to be some kind of like inherent thing about you, right? Yeah, and harmony that... implies that there's like a match between two things, and it seems like we're denying mm -hmm. the existence of that internal thing, which is some gender identity. And yeah, I guess my, my, the problem well, I'm what having. What is the internal thing? The well, the internal thing it seems to be that we have some feeling, some internal feeling of like gender. Yeah. Well, we I have mean, some internal. Well, gender means a million things. We no, have some internal feelings about No, I don't think ourselves. it's. I think we have an internal like. I think that there is like some internal feeling of gender that we seem to understand in, as two different what do you things. Mean when you say in a that? practical sense, what is gender there? Like, are we talking about how we want to be treated? Are we talking about the names we would prefer to be called? Are we talking about how our body should look? What, what yeah, I think, I think that I think that all, I think that all of those things are encompassed under the concept of gender. So, so, and, and before you do, before you do, uh, because once you do, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, it's going to take a while. <laughs> so, I just, so I just want uh, Red Charlie, who had her hand up, want to make sure I, I, I can get her. Get her get some um, yeah. So like, I was thinking of something like, what does everyone here think? Um, so we're talking about gender abolition, right? And like this intersects obviously with gender euphoria, gender dysphoria. If we put someone like a, a a baby on like an island and they have no society right um would gender dis would gender dysphoria be possible like if there is no gender in society could someone feel gender dysphoria or would it just be body dysphoria i i think that i, I mean obviously gender being a social construct would rely on existing within some sort of social construct but you would still have like body dysmorphia. I, I think that's definitely yeah. a thing that would still occur. Um, like you, you can look at the, the case of like intersex people, for example, uh, who have a disproportionately high rate of body dysmorphia, especially if you know their parents choose what they want their child to have in their downstairs department or whatever. Um, so that would still mm -hmm. exist. So, so let's, go Demi Mama, there... let's go to Demi Mama, then Vivian, uh, then Destiny. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that gender euphoria is just another term for the joy that comes from self-realization and self-actualization. Uh, I don't really see, like, gender... I think that when we talk about gender euphoria, there's obviously a lot of personalization, and if gender is a huge issue in your life that has stood in the way of you being able to express yourself or in one way or another to varying degrees, um, I think it is absolutely natural that we would have a term for, like, hey... Uh, this shit is fixed and I feel great about being able to self-realize and self-actualize like those are things we already acknowledge as concepts for all kinds of other things I don't think that um, it's any different when it comes to to gender now. I Acknowledge that gender is a really really uh, hazy um, subject and that's why there's some confusion and, and um, inc Unclearness or whatever on on some of these terms But but the reality is that there's all kinds of examples in our life where we achieve something that is important to us as an individual, and we receive euphoria as a result of that. Um, I don't think that's any different for gender, and I don't think that that would disappear um, in a post, you know, in a gender abolitionist or gender ascensionist, uh, uh, as I'm going to use from now on, uh, society, um, because uh, I think it would just be understood slightly differently. I think that there would still be people who are like, oh yeah, oh my God, this like dress feels great being, seen as beautiful by people is fucking awesome. I love this shit. It, they just wouldn't necessarily call it gender euphoria. That's just a term that exists as a product of our of our current environment, in my opinion. And it's it's very, very similar to many other types of euphoria that we receive. Let's go to Vivian and then uh, Destiny. Yeah, so as to the Desert Island question, I think like what Jack said about like uh, 
So I think there are a couple of different kinds of dysphoria. There's like body dysphoria where like if, you know, you look in the mirror or you look down at yourself and you're like, this shit just doesn't fit, right? That's probably closer to like dysmorphia. And then there's a kind of social dysphoria that exists, right? When your internal schema doesn't match with the uh, uh, way other people perceive you and maybe you're treated differently. Somebody uses the wrong pronouns or like misgenders you, whatever, right? Um, in, in the desert island equation, like, that's really difficult to happen because you're not fucking interacting with anybody else, right? It could be possible that you could experience a kind of um, uh, social gender euphoria in such a situation because you might find that there are like certain activities that you like doing by yourself that fit with this internal schema and you could be like, well, this is this is a job or a, or a thing that is meant for me. Like I'm 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 more in tune with this kind of activity, perhaps. But I don't think that the social dysphoria could exist because there's nobody to sort of enforce upon you that you, that your internal schema doesn't match their their uh, their person schema of you. Destiny. Okay, so two things. So one, gender euphoria, my understanding is it doesn't refer to just like, oh, I'm being treated how I want to be treated or oh, like I'm happy that I'm getting to do something I wanted to do. It, my understanding is that it specifically refers to the idea that you are being treated in society as the gender that you identify as. That that feeling of like doing something or being treated in a, in a way such that it closely like harmonizes with your gender identity is supposed to present like a special feeling that feels um, euphoric as opposed to the dysphoria that one might feel when, they're, uh, when there's a massive mismatch between their expression and their identity or the perceived gender and their gender identity um, for the first thing. And then for the second thing, um, I, I guess like for this idea that like gender is just 1 million percent socially constructed and like there is no internal gender, anything at all, I, I guess like how do we deal conceptually with the um, with like the with the intersex experiments where um, somebody's born intersex and the doctor just makes a call like, oh, well, we're just going to make this person this sex, we're going to do the surgery and then boom. And then some of these people end up growing up and they like kill themselves because they experience such dysphoria throughout their lives. Nothing ever feels right. Like if it was all just socially programming, like shouldn't we be able to just say, oh, well, you know, they should have been they were treated as a male they should have just grown okay, up as a male and everything should have been fine well we're Two conflating things. here i Two think things, we're conflating. Okay. Look, at, look at jack and then vosh okay first off um you there there are multiple types of gender euphoria one can be related to social stuff another can be related to body stuff um essentially and there as far as like intersex people like it, it's very 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 rare that any intersex person is born with like a life-threatening condition where like the doctor's like, oh, uh, uh, the, the genitals, I, I need I need to operate. You know, that that, that never happens. Like almost never happens. Um, There's one really famous so case just, though, right? Just, just, but just don't hmm. don't operate on the kid's genitals. Like just, just wait until they're an adult and they can make their own choice. Well, I, there is yeah, a really I, I, famous experiment that he was referencing though mm -hmm. that like is often cited in like John Money around being trans and so on. I forget what it was called, but hey, yeah, John Money absolute yeah. medical monstrosity should have never fucking happened. It, it, it uh, wasn't intersex though; it was a botched um, circumcision. So he decided to do SRS on a kid. Yeah, yeah, that was gross. Look, so. the, well, the conflation between physiological and psych or and sociological criteria here is really, really important. So, with regards to the intersex thing, yeah, I would say that would probably be an instance of like a, um, of a you know like a body dysmorphia um where there's the the incompatibility there isn't necessarily though it often can be social roles but it's your body not being the way you have some internal feeling it should be and i think that very often is uh biological but i wouldn't argue that's like necessarily a component of gender or at the very least it wouldn't have to be we can easily imagine a gender abolished world so you know your kids born kid can have x y x x whatever genitals doesn't really matter treat it all the same and um and we can imagine in such a world even if people don't really have a conceptualization of what a man or a woman is that some people would still be uncomfortable with their body would still want to change it through you know hormone surgery that sort of thing and that would be fine that'd be good um I don't know if that needs to be a component of gender, because without gender, such a thing would still take place. And I do think, um, and this varies from person to person, but I think a lot of dysphoria and euphoria also come from um, a set of feelings people have about the way given gender should look, even if that's not an inherent component of the gender identity itself. So an example of this would be that there are plenty of woke feminist trans women who are perfectly aware of the fact that cisgender women grow hair on their arms and legs and armpits. It just, ev everyone does. I mean, almost everyone. Some people are naturally hairless, but almost everyone does. And in spite of a perfectly consistent, rational understanding that that is in fact the, 
case. These trans women will often do everything in their power to make themselves as hairless as possible. And in doing so, they're not so much trying to look like a cis woman in a biological sense. They're trying to conform to expectations. But if we didn't have those gendered expectations about how cis women should groom themselves and wax their armpits or what have you, would that be a component of dysphoria for trans women? Or if we lived in a world without that expectation, would trans women be okay, all of them, I mean, having hairy armpits and going, oh, yeah, fine, this is fine. It's interesting. Oh, no. I mean, are there's we, no hard line to split these It feels two like we literally are making. It feels like basically the argument is that like we not, nobody in here believes that trans people would exist if like we didn't have gendered roles in society. Do we? Does everyone in here believe that? Because that's what it sounds like no, I'm hearing. There would still no. be people with sexual. Wait, uh, why would you? Be, why would you be trans at all if there were no gender roles in society unless there was some underlying wait, wait factor matter? I so no, I, I think body. that basically everyone would probably fit what we currently uh, recognize as trans. People would express themselves in ways that we currently do not allow people to express themselves in ways that we clinicalize and and call a uh, deviant and whatnot i think is actually I, I, we talked about this earlier i talked about how there's tons of people who um like for me uh not transitioning was ridiculously painful enough that it pushed me like to to aggressively pursue transition not everyone's to that degree but many people do chafe against the roles that they're put into just to different different degrees I think that we would have a society where maybe we wouldn't have the concept of trans people, but pe but there would probably be all kinds of people that if we were to map their expression onto our currently existing society as like a side-by-side -side analysis, they would probably be identified as trans in this society, but what in a you, future society, they would be freely to do whatever if, they if wanted. You, if you eliminated all of that then, let's say we eliminate all of our gender roles, it sounds like what you've done is you just like conveniently like recreated gender roles like or, or you've recreated some internal gender expression so we said let's say that we eliminate all gender roles and all gender expression from society and all that stuff well there's still going to be some people that feel dysphoria based upon their primary and secondary sexual characteristics that might require sex reassignment hmm. surgery or hormone replacement therapy to change like, well happen. it sounds like well yeah but when you say that it sounds like you actually are saying that there is some underlying fact of the matter even if we eliminated the whole concepts entirely there you, there necessarily must be some underlying fact no, of the matter I, if I people think, still wait, need again, feel the no, need to transition wait, Thing we don't, you we do don't on think a medical level. Can you do? Yeah, we don't think that the the social components of, of transness or of gender are things that need exist, but there are still going to be people who for biological reasons want uh, their bodies to look and behave differently than how they do. How do they want but them to look and behave though? I, I mean, because well, uh, some look, people who like, are we, born we with have, a given set of genitals want a different people one. Here. A yeah. bunch of trans people here. I transitioned because I wanted to look and feel different than what I did before. And like yeah. that was definitely a component of it. It wasn't all entirely how people look at me. Yeah, but like, is it is it just uh, by chance that like all of those feelings tend to conform with like the Western understanding of like how no, a female wait, or the, woman presents herself? Like, wait. No, 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 no. I, I just talked about that though with the shaving example so people's understanding of what a given body looks like or what a sex looks like is influenced by social rules surrounding that sex a, a la waxing armpits but that's not an inherent thing we're taught that I believe that in a world without gender, people who experience sexual dysphoria would still want to get corrective surgery for that. And that's what would the dysphoria be, though, if there was no expectation? Where does that Wait, dysphoria so stem from? So, so uh, let's, let's, let's let a trans individual in uh, to help answer these. Um, but uh, let's go to Alice, um, and then Vivian, um, and then Demon. Okay. Uh, just to just to address that, uh, Destiny. So, um, if 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 the roles were removed. I don't care. Um, like, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I would have done, uh, you know, I would have expressed myself however the hell I wanted to express myself regardless, and I still do. Like, if you see me on stream, there's many times where I am not presenting femininely. Um, uh, I, but I have uh, primarily um, sexual uh, characteristics, uh, you know, a dysphoria based on sexual characteristics. I still would have had that dysphoria regardless of what the social expectations were because it's based purely on the sexual characteristic component, not mm -hmm. the societal expectation. Now, maybe I would have like what does um, that like mean Josh though? Said. Like what? Like you oh, said right. that, it, that you're having a dysphoria that's based on some like biological characteristic. That dysphoria, like what is that characteristic? Like what? What is I it? I don't. I don't like having a dick. I don't like not having boobs. I don't like. Um, there's like literal physical components. Yeah, I don't but like, like there's the literally that... we have a category that's like created to describe dicks and boobs, and it's sex, right? Like these are all like primary or secondary sexual yes. characteristics. Yes, yeah. I have so dysphoria based on my sex, not my gender. Sex. 
But that doesn't have to... I, I don't buy the argument that gender must exist because there are people who have problems with their sexual characteristics. I'm not saying... I'm, what I'm people, saying... I'm not arguing whether or not gender exists or whatever in some, like, broad category. What, like, what I'm getting at is that the, the concept of sex or gender even, um, gender being abstracted of sex, but we'll say sex even as a category, that there seems to be some underlying fact of the matter that's not just, like, an agreement that we have with each other. There seems to be some underlying fact of the matter it, there. Well, yeah, of course there are underlying components of sex that aren't exclusively so wait you're asking, that you're I kind of want, wait you, you're asking why people want things why does somebody want what do you think that the only reason that say like somebody could want to get ripped as fuck is only social or do you think they could just be like hey i think i look good this way and i want to be ripped as fuck and i want other people to see me ripped as fuck there's no i, I mean like that is a, a, yeah, there's probably some weird process in our mind that determines why we want that thing, but we don't need to even try and categorize that. That's separate from somebody's ability to identify as who they are. That's what, what I think we're trying to get at here. There's a consistent the, the, it's not It's not the same. I think all of this, all uh, of this plays into something that I've been playing around with for a while and trying to, like, work out whether it's, like, congruent or makes sense. And you know what? There's a lot of big brains on this panel, so maybe I can just float something, right? Um, I said this to Destiny before, but, like, probably not really that open otherwise. Um, I, I, I think there is a good argument to be made for a component of gender being like a sexual, sexual character, uh, secondary sexual characteristic, uh, a neurophysiological or uh, trait or set of traits uh, that map onto sort of a a, uh, a social schema, a, a social framework, right? And like I said earlier, they sort of like feed into each other. So there's like this internal component, which is something that's like inherent and almost essential possibly fluid, can change over time, um, but is part of the sort of like uh, lens through which we view society, which is informed by actual physical, like neurophysiological yeah. uh, construct within the brain. I, I don't think I disagree like, with you, but the, the yeah. arguments that the other people are making are in complete contrast to that, where they, it seems to be, yeah, and I might no, be misunderstanding, but I'm it right, seems like I'm the other arguments is that there's, there's no underlying like fact of the matter at all. Wait, there Tossing is for sex. Really? on the arms and stuff like does nothing to address that. Obviously, this would be like a societal expectation that is like pushed upon people, and they use their internal map, right? Where they're like, okay, so I identify as this gender, blah blah blah, um, and this is what society expects of me because of that, and then they will engage in those kinds of actions. But there's still something internal going on there that informs them that they ought to identify as this gender, and then they see other people who also identify as that gender behaving in certain ways and a sort of pressure to match that i, I think i, I guess can, i'm I, can... I i guess i'm really i i i want to know what the confusion is destiny i feel i feel like this has been like we're, we're talking in circles at this point so like are, are you saying like you think that there's like an underlying thing that's making people do we want so to transition? yeah so my problem like is that it seems like there are i i actually can't even keep track of this point because it's hard to keep it's hard to keep no, I'm not blaming you guys. It's just, uh, just in terms of understanding what people are saying. It feels like um, a lot of people on this panel, or some people on this panel, believe that gender and sex are wholly arbitrary things that are like not only are they ill-defined, you actually can't define them. That the concept of sex or gender literally escapes definition because there might be some exception to the rule or whatever. That these things are indefinable. And my 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 challenge to that is, it feels like there does seem to be some sort of internal identification with this concept that makes it so that you. Can't can't just simply say, oh, well, sex and gender are just totally not real things. We can abolish them and they could just be names we give ourselves. It seems that that would be contrary to what most people feel internally. And then my, my example for that is that one is you get kids that have like um, botched sex reassignment surgeries at birth. They go through life feeling miserable, even if they're socialized a certain way, and then they end up killing themselves. The one example that Vivian brought up, I wish I could remember the name of this case, really popular. Um, or, or the idea that people, even in a society where there are no gender expectations, would still feel like a trans person. They would still feel like there's some fundamental mismatch between their body's characteristics and the gender that they identify with internally, or the sex even they identify wait, with I'm internally. So, okay, can I? Can I'm I sorry. Wait, I'm I think sorry I if, I, if, if I, really I missed the try. opening of this, but when has anyone said that sex is undefinable? <laughs> uh, I know at the very, at the very least, Demon Mama was saying that. Or did, am I wrong on that, Demon Mama? You're not saying that. I so oh my god like, oh so wait hold on Joe wait, wait am I crazy I, you oh, lost shit, Joe. Joe. let me let me talk it's my turn right right it's my turn this was right okay, I was the next and then we'll get you in Jackson okay. listen so okay uh god like first of all no I don't I mean I do believe that all things that we use that are linguistically are to some degree a social construct to a certain degree obviously there are very different um parameters for those things we this is just a fact of language Humans communicate by making I'm constructs. I'm talking about human language. 
Right, 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 right. But you well, don't, you, we have to be if we're talking. No, about we're not. Right? I'm talking so, about the concept okay, can you, of gender. Can you, if you're, that you're exists, you're clearly confused. Just let me let me explain. I'll make it. I'll make it clear. Um, like the, the the fact of the matter is, like I do believe that that sex has, um, like sex is useful as a biological term to some degree. I think we can go back and forth about how we define that, and scientists have and are. But sex is a descriptor of biological processes, some of which we do not fully understand yet. Gender is, in my opinion, the so- I, Dude, these people talk for so long. It takes them like 20 sentences just saying you're saying like one sentence. I don't know why. Well, no, but there seems to be, there does seem to be. And I don't believe that there is as much of a uh, connection as some people think. For example, our society has predominantly uh, assumed that gen- And then they always go off and they give like, well, for example, for example, it's like, we don't need the example. I understand what you said. I don't, I don't know why you're giving an example. And then the example just obfuscates the main point even more. And blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's the case. I think that many people have all of these different tastes and that we should move these things apart, that gender is better understood as a concept of identity, of, 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 a, of, of social interaction, and that we don't really use it, like we don't really use gender like all that much in a meaningful way, that we should, we should make it more useful by acknowledging that this is a, 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 a part of identity. Now- Okay, how does it make sense? I don't understand. Wait, wait, hold on, Let, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm not done yet. So, uh, let me pull from personal experience, and I think this will make sense. When I first began my transition, I, I like I like how we go from bull bullshit analogies to now we have anecdotes, and like, oh my god, please fuck. Interested in that because I realized over time that that was not something that was causing dysphoria for me for whatever reason. Now, previously, there was a social expectation in my mind about what a woman is, and that. De that definition included needing to have a vagina or a vulva or however you want to use the terminology, okay? Right. You're I no longer believe that. You and still that wanted to be a woman. No, no, wait, right? what I, what I, yes, wait, wait, course, wait, what I don't I understand is I when we were specifically tied. saying that anybody can call themselves any gender they want, how can you, yes. how does that view matching what you're saying now? You're saying, so earlier you said anybody can call themselves any gender they want or anybody can identify anything, but now you're saying, well, hold on, maybe there is some underlying fact of the matter. How are these two definitions congruent? You, you, Destiny, you're missing the difference between sex and gender. Like, this is the core problem that's happening. I'm only you're talking about- hold on, hold on, stop. First of all, I'm only talking about sex right now, okay? We'll, we'll just exclusively talk about sex. Do you agree that, like, sex exists as some, like, actual, like, definable category that people understand? Of, uh, yeah, to some degree, yes, of course. All, like, obviously, it is a real thing. Okay, like, do you think that gender yeah. is somewhat, like, causally abstracted off of sex, or no? No, not really. I would really. say it's correlative. I mean, I, I think there's- So the I fact that like 98% of wait, people are cisgendered, on, like doesn't- Hold on a second. You like, asked me a question, I want to answer the like question. Okay, please do it without yeah. anecdotes and analogies and just answer the question. Oh, cool. whining. Well, 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 when did you become such a whining? I, it's so boring, because you guys take like three minutes to answer your question instead of just like giving the answer. It's so annoying. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I couldn't give you a one sentence definition. I don't, you can give me as many sentences as you want. I just don't need like 50 analogies to bodybuilding or, or anecdotes. Just like give the answer. I'll jump in. I'll take longer than both of you combined. Okay. And, and if you could just answer the question so we can move on to Jack, because Jack yeah, also can wants you, to. Can you state the question for me again so I can. I can <clears> okay. So I, I, it just, it felt like earlier all of us were saying, um, because I think Joe was arguing that there must be some definition definition of woman, whether we're talking gender or sex. I think earlier you guys were talking sex, but I guess we can say sex or gender, right? For either of these. It seemed like Joe was arguing that there was some underlying definition that people seemem to understand internally, but then it felt like Demon Mama, your argument was like, well, no, literally anybody could call themselves any gender they want and it would be okay. It should be a descriptor like a name. That was the comparison that you used. Yeah, but now it sounds like gender, you're saying, well, there yeah, is some gender. underlying oh, fact of the matter related oh. to gender for gender i don't believe that sex and gender i think that in our society right now we erroneously ascribe gender as something that like grows out of sex i don't think that's the case actually. okay if that's and not I, the case then how do we deal with the kids how do we oh, okay. okay okay i know how do we deal with the kids that get the surgery and are intersex to somebody else and then end up killing themselves you just wait, that, wait, that's a sex okay. thing. Wait, hold wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Hold on. Yeah, we it, we it, really it, need to split this line right here, okay? Sex is real. It is, to an extent, arbitrary. It is not uh, binary. There's a bimodal component. You just said the same okay. thing like three times. We understand. Go. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. To, well, uh, just to hammer it in, because it keeps coming up again. Gender 
Well, that's a lot more complicated. I think that gender is broadly just another social category that allows us to express who we are. Most people are okay with okay, the category. You know, so this is my question. Them. This is my question. I want. I need. I want to hear an answer to this. Wait. I need to hear an answer to this, and I'll shut up. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yes. I, I just want to know an answer. Okay. I'll shut up for the. I swear to God. I'll shut up. I'll shut up for the rest of the panel. Okay. For okay. Then for Jack. I'll shut up for the rest of the panel. I just because we keep dancing around this so much, and people want to like hop to every definition to avoid answering this question. Okay. If you were to take somebody, please don't call me performative. Okay. Your entire everything is a performance. Okay. And not the way this is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. So the question I'm, 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 is, this is my oh, understanding. Oh, wait, I'm going to start meeting people. Okay. Don't worry. My understanding is that if you were to take a kid at birth, okay, and you were to just SRS them to, to another sex, okay, and they were to grow up, that that gender, that's not just a performative thing. That's not just a social thing. That There is some internal content there related to gender, and that person will grow up with dysphoria and kill themselves. It wasn't just a matter of having the right sex parts or whatever, that there's like some deeper gender content there. There. So wait, I, I, I think wait, if there was no 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 so so the the idea is that there is a correlation there but it doesn't necessarily have to happen all the time because there are botched circumcisions okay there there are there are things that happen there are intersex people uh who exist who grow up and they're perfectly fine uh they they never know or you can take a look at like how people are born with like chimerism and like you know you grow up to be like an 80 year old grandpa and you go in for like uh stomach cramps to the hospital and it, it turns out you had ovaries the entire time you didn't know um so like there there are these ideas but when you get down to it we don't know what makes people trans and we don't know what makes people react the way they do because it's a complicated topic. And it's kind of what I was trying to get at when I talked to you earlier and was just like, the more you know about somebody, the more complicated it gets. Um, and if gender that, doesn't map onto sex, why is it that you would, why wouldn't we advocate then at this point for literally just like mental transition for trans people? Like, just think about your gender differently. Because that doesn't work for all trans people. That, but now, why not? Some, That's my question trans, is why not? Some, some trans because people physiological... have, have, have like issues with their bodies that they need to change. What kind and of we know sexual that that issues has, though? We know that that has better medical outcomes. Like even if you, if, if, if you want to, if you want to throw, if you want to throw, I, I know not all trans people have dysphoria. Okay, I was getting no, no, to that. No, no, I'm not saying oh, that. Like to, to get to them, so they don't have body dysphoria, right? Like that's that's not an issue. They have sexual so they dysphoria. Encourage right? them to think about their gender differently, and then surely it would go away if it was completely fucking like socially constructed. Obviously, it isn't. Obviously, there's some kind of inherent fucking thing that is informing the way that they think about their gender within society. Like regardless of any kind of like body thing going on at all. So the the, the so, issue being that for some trans people you like you can't be taught to think differently about your body that but like why that that's literally I part of yeah, look look like yeah. look destiny it, it's literally in the example you gave of somebody who's raised after a botched circumcision and, and like got like an srs surgery whatever did, never knew that they were trans that person was completely taught to think about their gender in a certain way it still made them miserable yeah then so why can't do it that's wait, my because, question. We don't know. Brain, We're not scientists. Has, but the question seems to internal. Wait, please, please. Your brain has a map as to what your body is supposed to look like. There is a physiological understanding that people have. As far as I can tell, it has to do with hormone washes. Sure, when you're I understand what you're saying. I agree with you, Vosh, but that's the so, argument right, that no, no, I'm no, making. No. Wait, hold on. Wait, please. Okay. So what we're talking about right now is if a person, if there's some mismatch, either because of a botched surgery or because of some, uh, because of uh, the, the, the things didn't pan out as they should have, perhaps, and there is some physiological discomfort with the way one's body is organized. That is a purely biological and sexual phenomena. Now, because our society associates gender with sex, it will remain the case that people who experience that phenomena, that physiological phenomena, one completely divorced inherently from social factors, may still feel as though there are other correlative social factors that tie into that that a person who is a trans woman who wants to change the way their body looks might also think that they want to wear frilly dresses or what have you but i don't believe and as i understand it the literature doesn't support the idea that this is inherent or biological instead people grow up learning what women are supposed to look like what men are supposed to look like and that's a large component of the social dysphoria that not only is your body not looking the way you want it to but then you realize oh god well, people with the kind of body that I want to have, they also do X, Y, Z, and what have you. And that can conflate the sociological and the psychological characteristics.
But what you're describing, botched surgeries and what have you, sexual dysphoria, this is a physiological phenomenon. This would happen on a desert island. Yeah, but when I, I know, but I'm going a step further. I'm saying it seems like gender is physiological as well. That seems to be the case that it does trace to some part of the brain. And if we were talking about like the research. What is gender? What is? What do you mean by gender? One at a time, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. So Destiny, finish whatever point you're trying to make. And then I'm going to go to Vivian. Now I'm going to go to Demon Mama, then back to Jack. Sure, so when I talk about the gender that you experience, the term that I'm using here is gender identity. So the gender that you identify identify as. It, it seems like that maps onto something in the brain that's not just your sexual characteristics. My understanding is that when people do like the brain scans and they look at the white matter and everything of people with, who are trans, who identify as transgender and they look at their brains, they actually see they're like, oh wow, this trans woman, their brain actually more resembles that of a cisgender woman than a cisgender male. Pointing to like some, like that there for might some. be some, a what? Everything for is going to be for some. When you say for some to obfuscate, it doesn't get anywhere closer to well, any there are, actual there are trans argument. women who okay. don't experience sure. sexual dysphoria. Sure. I'm not necessarily, I'm just saying like it does seem to be that there is some underlying experience of gender that is independent from just what society tells you. That what there, experience? What so, things? Uh, Viv, huh, Vivian, 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 if she can answer the question. Maybe, I'm sure. Vivian, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Destiny's right, there are, like the literature um, doesn't necessarily support Fosch's position. Um, it is inconclusive. Uh, the study that Destiny is talking about, I think was done in like fucking Sweden or something, where they like measured a whole load of um, trans women's brains and said there are certain markers that are like similar to cis women's brains, right? Um, well, but it's, correct? All very, it's all very wishy-washy and fucking inconclusive. The, the reason I brought up like uh, people who have like uh, dysphoria or want to change their gender or whatever, um, but don't have like sexual dysphoria, right? Don't have like body dysphoria, is that this indicates that there's something beyond like simply, uh, you know, the the what. Fosh was talking about with the hormone washers and room or whatever, and your body doesn't match, blah, blah, blah. You have the sexual dysphoria. But there are people who also have like a social dysphoria, right? Without experience, the, experiencing the body dysphoria. Uh, and so there has to be some sort of like psychological process or wait, like- that is not, wait, hold on. That is absolutely incorrect. Just because people okay. chafe at social expectations given to them because of the biology they were they were uh, born with, does not mean there is an inherent biological characteristic to those desires. That this happens to people all the time. There are people who chafe at social expectations that are thrown their way without their consent in non-gendered contexts as well. And you said so you earlier that I was incorrect about a piece of literature that I cited. Could you tell me what exactly I was incorrect on, Vivian? Sorry? No, you said that I, I believe the literature overwhelmingly supports blah, blah, blah. And Wait, the what did I say? Like what was I wrong about? Sorry? About there, being, uh, about? about there being an inherent component to gender identity, a biological component to gender identity, or a neurophysiological component to gender identity. It what is, did I it say is that was incorrect? Sorry? You said I, I believe the literature supports that there is no inherent uh, inherent thing to like. Uh, as in, it hasn't been found. As in, there's no indication that um, that oh, yeah, uh, uh, the, the physiological think, characteristics that are associated with being actually indicate. I, I think I can. I think I can cut through this issue, right. a little bit, which is, first of all, when you have uh, brain studies. Um, it is not so easy for us to associate what spots in the brain yeah, go no. to what societal features. So, for example, if you measure, if you compare a brain scan of a trans woman to that of a cis female, and you come up with compare, you know, similar structures, we don't know what caused that. There could be many things. There could be similarities because that trans person has been living as a woman for 10 years and interacting as a a typical woman in, in her society is interacting and that causes your brain to shape. Obviously, what? we all acknowledge that. Wait, wait, the brain, no, I'm not done yet. Hold on. The oh brain is obviously how we interact with the world. So I'm not saying that there isn't like that, that gender is just a magical thing or whatever. I just think that gender, the social side of it, we in our society currently try to map it onto sex all the time so that we can have these weird um, projections about who should be what based on what they're born as. It's a very outdated way of looking at things and it doesn't map correctly. Yes, are there is there research that shows that trans women's brains are slightly more similar to cis women's brains? Yeah, but we don't know fucking why. We have no fucking clue. And they they don't know fucking why either. They don't know if it's because the HRT reshapes your brain. They don't know if it's because of something that happened in your utero that causes development. 
I don't think that necessarily matters because we don't really know exactly what causes us to want and do certain things. That is a very complicated question. Oh, I don't. It absolutely really matters. So. Hold it on. Is super matters. Matters. I'm not done yet. I know. Well, you're, just, you're just trying to argue against something that I didn't fucking say, Demon. I'm not like, arguing. I'm not even arguing against you. I'm just trying to have my turn talking, Viv. That's it. Okay. Well. I didn't even argue. I didn't even necessarily disagree with you. I just I don't even know what we're arguing about anymore. I'm yeah, familiar. I, 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 this is okay. Well, um, what I'm trying to say is that yes, these studies do exist. There's no. I don't think anybody here is contesting mm -hmm. that these studies exist. We just don't know exactly what these things map to. It's interesting for sure that cis women and trans women have some similar brain function and uh, or brain structure. That's great, but we don't know what causes that. We don't know if it's the socialization. We don't know if it's in utero. There's a there's a hormone bath. We don't know if it's it's being on HRT that changes the structure of your brain. There's all these things. And what I'm saying is that sex. The, the biological structure of how sex go, it, it expresses itself in our bodies and brains is one thing, and gender, how we interact with society, how we identify with others are different things. In our society, <laughs> they're conflated frequently, which leads to imperfect answers. Okay, can I ask I a question, just real quick question on Demo, just on that, on that particular topic. Can you socialize somebody out of their gender? What? What do you mean? Could you socialize somebody out of their gender? Can you explain like what you mean by that? Sure. Like, so let's say you that you take a person and you raise them in a certain way. Um, could you take somebody that's like five, six, seven years old or whatever and just socialize them in a different way such that their gender identity changes? Probably to some degree. I, in I that, would say like, almost if, certainly. You would have, okay, why can't you no, just no, no, say wait, 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 you answer, yes. You asked me a question, let me Yeah, but you didn't answer. You were like you, dancing you, around you, because you, it was another wait, question wait, that you were too scared to answer I, because you know it's going to commit you to an answer that you're going to be contradicting oh yourself God. later. Okay, all right, uh, great. I don't think she said it. enough for you to arrive No, that. she does, because question. every time I ask you a question, she dances around. I was like, well, sometimes maybe. All right, all right, don't worry. I'm going to meet everyone. I'm going to meet everyone. So look, look, dear mama, try to answer the question. In a short amount of time, then I'm gonna go to Jack and I'm gonna go to Alice. She had her hand up as well. Yes. All right. Yes. So finish like seriously, like 30 seconds yes. of fucking time. With you. regard to gender, almost certainly. I would say that almost certainly you could do that. Now, would that be a good thing? Probably in most cases not. Why but not? if you had a kid hold on. If you had what? a kid that was raised in like like say a, a random like white kid who was raised by Native Americans who believe in two spirit, maybe that child would understand themselves as a two spirit instead of as a man or a woman. That is how you could like social how we socially construct gender is super important. Now, does that mean that it would that that would directly affect their understanding of sex? Not necessarily. Maybe. It depends on the society and the words that we use. Okay. So, uh Jack and then uh Alice, all right? And then we'll let the men back in if you want, but Jack and Alice, please. <laughs> <laughs> to to build the uh to build on Demon Mama's point a little bit, um and to kind of get at what I was talking about at the very beginning of this conversation is that we have like anthropological evidence of both past and current societies across the world that have more than two gender identities. Um, and like it, it kind of it definitely makes it a lot harder to say that, well, like sex maps onto gender identity and like or, or gender identity maps onto sex when you have more than two and your understanding of sex is bimodal. Um, so like this is definitely a giant issue that I think someone would have to explain if they're trying to conflate this thing, uh, sex and gender. Um, and also we, th there are even fringe cases around the world where like through biological processes, third sexes have been created. That, that is something that exists in the world, like heritable traits that are a third sex. So like it, it is a way more complicated issue than a lot of people on this panel are trying to make it. Um, and I, 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 I'm just going to leave it at that. Well, okay. I think I'm saying it. Uh, uh, Alice, Alice, Alice. And then we'll let other people back in. Okay, all I really want to question is, right now, first off, third sex, I want to source for that, because I have researched that. I've never found that before. Any biological, biologically heritable third sex, please do send me that. Mm -hmm. um, second off, um, somebody talked about um, socialization and whether that could change. We literally went over this. So um, uh, John to Joan, uh, uh, it was the, the, the John Money uh, case. Um, so that literally proves that socialization is not sufficient for gender. Um, you can literally sexually reassign someone, raise them as a, a, a woman and have them still not identify with that identity. It's, you literally can't put it down purely to socialization. Hey, we're, we're doing it again. 
What are yeah, we doing? Uh, no one is conflating wait, sex and gender. Stop saying that. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, wait. This is just more complicated. Oh, wait, wait. Just okay, wait. Please. Okay, go ahead, Vosh. Okay, so just because. Okay. Sex and gender are correlative in the sense that we are taught that characteristics associated with sex are also associated with the gender that we assign to people born of that sex. So with that being said, there are a plethora of social factors that could cause a person to chafe at social expectations that are given to them if those social expectations are somehow in conflict with those that are generally associated with the sex that their body wants them to be. That is to say, the sexual dysphoria that they feel is magnified because there are social characteristics that deviate from that which they're being taught. Now, if you were to raise some kid on a farm or on the moon, and that kid was born XY, you know, like, a, like you call him a boy here, okay? And you were to raise that kid, and you were to say, hey, yo, you're a woman, and uh, you dresses, you like dresses, and you do housework. I think that if you were to do that, and you were to do that, say, with many young boys and girls in the reverse sense, you would produce a social order about as arbitrary and about as stable as the one we have today. That the roles are arbitrary, but the group identifiers inform our placement within those roles. Now, if you were to take a, a person born XY, like a boy or whatever, and then to raise them as a woman here in America today, there might be some agitation or dysphoria caused by the fact that they recognize there's a pretty significant difference between how they look and how they're treated relative to other people. And that might magnify issues that might lead to them developing sexual or social dysphoria, depending on the ways in which they were raised, quote unquote, as a woman. Have so these factors, they conflate and they overlap significantly. But I reject the idea that people who kill themselves because of botched uh, um, SRS surgery or uh, intersex issues at birth or because of circumcision necessarily means that gender is an inherent biological concept or that there's a causal relationship between the two. That okay. needn't be the case. There are social explanations for those presences. So Alice, right. Alice will spawn, and then I'm going to hit from Red Charlie who hasn't been able to say anything. Okay, also I love you all very much. I have to sleep though. Okay, be careful. Bye. All right. Fuck, okay, I, dude, it, I feel like when I have these panels, fuck, I felt like six persons, six people might've been doable. The thing that drives me the craziest is like, you wanna go down like a specific line of questioning, but then everybody else wants to chime in and then they 90 degree it off into the other direction and it just drives me fucking crazy. And you never actually settle any dispute. This is the pr uh, this is the big problem I have with panels. It's like, I just wanna like go like, boom, 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 boom. Okay, let's figure that out. Like, boom, 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 boom. Let's figure that out, okay. But instead it's like, boom, boom. Okay, but what about boom, 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 boom. Okay, but then what about like, boom, boom, boom. And then, what about, and then you like, you never actually like figure out, like you never actually settle like anything. And it, oh God, it, it drives me crazy so much because every new person that comes in is like, it is like wants to like go off into like another topic and it's like fuck now i don't fault any of the individuals but like oh god it just huh oh god it just drives me crazy okay i'm gonna host these people i love you very much i i, I don't understand how you can I, like the, the the big contradiction for me the thing that like drives me the craziest um that i don't understand is that like it feels to me like if we're going to say that there's literally no internal content of gender ever that there was never t internal content of gender then every trans person that is like getting reassignment surgery and all this is like, damn, like they should just try to find a way to socialize differently. Like why go through surgery? Why do all this? If it's all just like concepts or whatever to you and you could just think yourself into another gender. Like, I don't know. Like it just feels like, I, 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 like I'm curious what the resolution is, like how they resolve that. Like, oh God, I don't know. Remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Related it, to the word big. Zero isn't even a word. No, no, he's saying put zero. <laughs> How did I look on stream? Why are you but, making a collage of moves? Why did you have that ready to go? It's my moot and wallpaper uh, is okay.